Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Sherbertland. I am your host of the day. Goodbye, 18,000, a.k.a. Tanner. Sadly, uh, Adrian could not be here uh, at the moment. He's uh, too busy getting his, uh, his, um... I can't think of an excuse. Come come into frame. Sorry. We were going to do a whole gag, but I couldn't think of it, it. And I ruined it. I, I should have thought of what it was from the get-go. Should have. Should have. But no, he's here. It's a joke. We tried to play a practical joke on, on all the video listeners <laughs> for, for episode 14 here. Audio listeners wouldn't have even known. Ha! I was actually planning to uh, he jump was planning up from behind the couch. To hide in the couch, then he was planning to hide <laughs> under the couch. It was we 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 were thinking of stuff, and then we decided, you know what? Maybe that's not the best idea like for him, for so. now. So, well, I like fun, but I don't like breaking the system, especially because 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 yeah. you should have said he was on a date. <laughs> well, I, sh I I had to make it believable though. Okay. Oh, I know. Oh, I, I that was that was a little too far. Ooh. Um, did, you just do did I just accidentally? Um, all right, episode 14. We missed 14? last week. Yes, 14. 14 okay. uh, we missed last week. Again, it's obviously because the week before that was 13. Um, but I had crazy family obligations. Stuff was going on. Uh, but you know what? You had to do it to him. I had to do it to him. But now we're all good. Um, so I actually was sick yesterday. And I was thinking, like, I can't miss the podcast again. It was his so, guy's birthday yesterday. It was my birthday yesterday. Say happy I birthday, Tom. I spent it. Yeah, everybody should say happy birthday. I got, like, three on the Discord. That's not enough. <laughs> There's, like, 70 people I there. sent him a cat video. You sent me a cat video of, like, cats dancing going, Chatter! Happy birthday! And it's like a cat going... <laughs> so... <laughs> guy dressed up in a cat guy suit. Guy dressed up in a cat suit, yes. Playing with cupcakes. I uh, did it not send the Salmon Max. Yeah, I did get the Salmon Max video from you, Emily. I got a, a good couple videos. I got um, I got your cat video. I got the yeah. Salmon Max one. I got a bunch from um, an anime, um, Chromarty Chrom High, about happy birthday. I got sent the one. So there's a guy in one of the Common Rider shows whose whole gimmick is he always goes Subarashi, happy birthday, and it's the best thing ever. So it's a whole montage of him saying happy birthday. Yeah, and it's the best. Um, that's the best. It's so good. Um, yes, happy belated birthday. I am now 23. I thought I was feel? 24. <laughs> so I was like, am I 23 or 24? And I had to actually do the math. Because I'm finally at that point where I'm just like, the years are starting to blur, oh, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, as we're going to get to our main topic later, which deals directly about different years, I quickly learned that, wow, my brain just takes all those years <laughs> and mushes them into like one huge thing because like i was looking at the years and i'm like that came out that year and i'm like that's way too soon or that's way too early like what's happening so we'll uh we'll get to that um i remember that guy yes from common rider um i'm now a senior citizen apparently 23 years old that's pretty old yep i'm Does ancient that make me like dead <laughs> Yep, you're gone. Wait, how old are you now? You're 24? 23. You're 23? Okay, yeah, because you got 20. Right, okay. I'm like four months ahead of you. Right, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you're 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 dead and gone. Rip, dude. <laughs> okay, speaking of dead and gone, let's talk about uh, our weeks on which uh, we were dead and that gone. That was a terrible segue. Shut up, I'm trying, okay? I got, I'll, I'll go first, because okay. I got, one thing I did want to do last week, which I forgot to do, was my anime roundup of the season. Talking about what I'm watching. The season. Well, because anime is done in seasons. Every TV show is done in seasons. No, no, no. Okay, no, no, no. The, the way it works for anime is there is literally the spring 2017 oh. season, the summer 2017, the fall 2017, and the winter 2017. They're literally broken up. Like, like as in all of the stuff each season. Okay. Like, they're, they're literally, like, time slots, pretty much. So, I got my sheet here. Hopefully you pick that up. So I'm going to go over uh, the list of a couple anime that I'm watching right now. Okay. Okay. First off, My Hero Academia. I'm sure you've heard of this one quite a bit. That, that's the one that I said is basically Avengers yeah. meets Harry yeah. Potter. I know. Yeah. I'm it's just... 
it's still really good. There was one, like the first, this thing that sucked is the first episode. I love how as soon as I start talking about anime, you take out your phone. <laughs> no, I'm as, going to my as thing. As soon as, I'm going literally to... as soon as I start talking about anime, I see you take <laughs> out your phone and I'm like, well, fine. No, it's I'm okay. I'm going to my It's okay. My it's okay. It's okay. okay. It's okay. Uh, but no, so um, the thing that sucked was the first episode of the season was a clip show episode. And to, of course, because it's the third season of a show that's on every, you know, year and a half or yeah. so. So the first one had to be a clip episode, which was a little disappointing, but it actually got away with it because the way they sort of framed it was it was a clip show inside of a, we're going to have a swimming competition, but all the heroes can use their powers. So half of them weren't even swimming. <laughs> like one, like one of the main guys, Bakugo, his whole power is he can make uh, his sweat creates explosions. So he can just like fly like you know how iron man kind of shoots the repulsors yeah. imagine that but instead of like a flame it is multiple explosions just constantly <laughs> oh going God. off so he just explodes over the pool and everyone's like now wait a damn minute this is a swimming competition <laughs> and he said oh, i don't care I gotta be the fastest so it's great um okay next up uh persona 5 the animation it's i'm also watching this persona 5 animated um some people <laughs> do you see the gif Yes. Okay. Um, Beat retweeted it. Yeah, I know. He laughed his ass off. There's, there's definitely like, cause oh this my is, God. so this, so here, here's, here's the thing that I, I feel like a lot of people don't get. And, and this is new to you for sure. When anime first airs on TV, it's literally <laughs> rushed out the door. It's, it, do we have all 22 minutes? Yep. It's gone. Okay. Right. Later on in the Blu-rays and the DVDs, that's when it's touched up to make it look best. Mm -hmm. We used to previously only get the DVDs, like way after they were done. So we'd get the touched up versions. And that's when people say, how come anime looks bad now? It's like, because we're watching the TV broadcast version. We're watching the version that is literally, is it done? Send it. Like, is everything colored in? Good. Okay. Right? So, like, that's why there's some scenes that definitely you're looking at it and you're like, oof, that could have been done a bit better. Obviously, like, the big important scenes are done well. But then a few of the incidental scenes don't look the best. And that's just the state of anime. So it is a bit of a... Some people... And, yeah, it's A1 Pictures. Um, and then the other things, people say that the pacing's a little off. But, so, it's a 12-episode show for a 120-hour <laughs> uh, game, right? Yeah. So, yeah, gonna it's gonna, to it's, they're going to have edit to edit it a little bit. Go a little fast. Um, but I'm still enjoying it. It's, uh, the, uh, you haven't heard the um, ending theme yet. Because they, they played the opening at the end of the first episode. Then the ending theme gets added in the second episode. Oh, yeah, I haven't heard it before. It's really good. Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um... Yeah, it's like down to the wire. Yeah, literally a minute before broadcast, usually, they send it off. Wow. And, like, there's been times where they've literally had to play commercials until the, like, DVD got there for the studio to play. Like, anime in Japan is a to-the-minute thing. Uh, don't worry, I'll get to Megalobox. Megalobox is, oh, I is awesome. I thought Megablox. <laughs> yeah, no, so it looks like Megablox, <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to Megalobox. Megalobox. But next up, I'm going in the order of that was on the... the uh, anime of the season site which yeah. is it lists all uh next one up you're gonna hate me for this it's called uma musume pretty derby do you know what do you know do you know what uma and musume might be take a guess did that horse show yes oh, it's God. horse girls no yes okay so it's literally what if race horses were girls and they literally have real race horses from japanese racetracks turned into girls and they're running and it's a race. And take a guess what the horse girls do after they win the race. What do they do? Taylor? They sing and dance on stage. Oh my god. It is... It's trash. But... Okay, number one, it's a mobile game in Japan. It's based on a mobile game. So you can see where the money would be when, like, you got okay, it. Yeah, yeah. Like, all the girls are the characters you can get through the gacha machine, essentially, okay. right? So it's like, yeah, that makes sense. But it's actually really good. And it's funny. And it's pure. And it's just a good... It's a good sports anime about girls who like to run and who also are horses. There's a few really funny nods on, like, drink your damn carrot juice and, like, stuff like that. But it's... I, I'm enjoying <laughs> it. It's, um... And glue factories must be depressing in that world. In the third episode, there's literally a girl who's like, yeah, I broke my leg and I can't race again for a while. And then like the horse she's named after in real life. Yeah, no, after like after that horse in real life broke its leg, they super killed it. <laughs> so it's like, it's just fun stuff like that. It's, it's Japan doing what Japan does best. Okay, but this one you might actually like. 
It's called Megalobox. Not Mega... Not... Mega blocks, not mega Roblox. It is megalo box. Okay, let me set the stage for you. Post-apocalyptic anime. So it's it's all and you know, uh, high high society, low society. Boxing with robot arms. Now, when I say boxing like robot arms, though, I'm not talking about like arms where their arms are replaced with robot stuff. I'm talking like exoskeleton arms that are just like on oh, just okay. on their yeah. arms so they have like pistons on their arms just and so that when like you know when they punch each other like sparks will fly because they'll scratch each other it is so cool <laughs> it's literally and it's like the like you got like you know the spunky teenager main character who's hot-headed you got like the old retired black guy coach it's literally cyberpunk punch out mm. it's so good it's really good uh so yeah megalobox is is going really well. Um, next one is Golden Kamui. This is another one that's like, okay, so there's like, you know, the sliding scale of degeneracy for anime. You know, you got <laughs> yeah, like U- yeah. Uma Musume on this side where it's like literally the worst, like <laughs> degenerate stuff ever. So then Megalobox and Gil- Golden Kamui are on this side of being like more artsy. Mm. So this is about a guy who is in the war. And then like after the war, he's like, all I want to do is get rich. So he goes to the northern part of Japan where the native people live. Did you know Japan has natives that are basically like our Native Americans? I didn't. Called the Ainu tribe. And oh. they're, it's, it's, and so here's the thing. This, this whole show is like about him trying to find this gold with an Ainu girl. And she has like the nature aspect of it where he has like, you know, the, the army knowledge. And it's really good because it really goes into the Ainu culture in a way that I've never seen in an anime before. Okay. It's really cool. It also helps that it's funny because, like, you know, it's, like, them trying to feed each other food and, like, catch squirrels and stuff. And it's, like, it's fun and funny. But just the way that they do the culture is so cool. Also, the faces are super exaggerated and horrible it's great uh i'll show you some some faces later but it's uh it's it's really good and then finally the last anime which i've been recently because it came out yesterday and i've already watched seven out of ten episodes because i i binged it it's called agretsuko okay okay so how do i start (laughs) this do you know what sanrio is the company sanrio no they made hello kitty Okay. They make mascots, essentially. You know, like Hello Kitty and all them. So this is their newest character. She is a 25-year-old office lady who, like, works in an office, and it's about her everyday life working in an office. Here's the gimmick. She sings screamo death metal music to get rid of her rage at night at karaoke bars. So it was originally just a series of shorts that were really cute and funny and relatable. Yeah. But Netflix picked it up and turned it into a full show. Okay. Um, well, by full, it's their 15-minute episodes, but, like, there's 10 of them. So it's basically, a, like, you know, a five-episode show, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, it is the most relatable thing I've ever seen in terms of a show understanding what it's like to be 20-something in this world. And yet it's, a like, an animal-based anime show. With screamo music. And in a shock twist, the screamo music is all dubbed and good. <laughs> so, like, it's it's all, like, it, the show got a dub, which is a great dub. Um, mostly the Persona cast for it, again. Yeah. So, it's, it's like, they're, you know they're good actors. But, like, the screamo music aspect is fully in English. And, like, in the last episode I watched, there was a sing-off music battle between two characters in a way that I would say it's up there with, like, top ten anime battles of all time. Oh, my God. It's so good. Um, oh. It's so good. It's... I would say watch... You have Netflix, right? Yeah. I would actually say you should watch this one. It's also weird, though, hearing Hello Kitty characters, essentially, uh, full-on swear <laughs> just constantly like literally the one of the songs that she sings is her singing you're a shitty boss you're a shitty boss over and over in screamo with subtitles so you know what she's saying and it's uh 
it's amazing. It's really good. <laughs> it's, yeah, no, it's great. Um, so that's about all the anime I'm watching of the season. I know there's more. Um, there's the Professor Layton anime that's that's out, which is crazy because, like, Layton never had an anime. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's new. But it's not on any streaming services, and so I'm not watching it. Uh, and there's there's a couple others. But, like, yeah, no, that's so that's about what I'm watching. And uh, that's about it for my week. Nothing else? Happened? Nothing else, really. I mean, I played a few games, but nothing I haven't talked about. What did you do for your birthday? I marked papers. And drank Tylenol. That's it. My family, like, we're all going to do something next week. Oh, okay. Because, it, it, because uh, my mom's not here. She's on vacation. Oh, okay. Well, vacation. It's a work vacation. So we're, we're going to do it next week. Fair so, enough. like, for this week, it was just, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll postpone it there. So, uh, there's Professor Lee Anatomy. Are there fan subs? Uh, yes. Yes, there is. It's, well, it's, it's focusing on his daughter right now, but he will have his own season after that. So that's kind of cool. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, no, that's it for me. That's it for you? Yeah. So what's, uh, All right. what's your week? Well, I'm going to start with a few things here. <gasps> Nani? What is I... going on? Actually, I, I have a bit of an idea because you told me this bag don't look in it. And so... I think it was a week and a half ago. Week and a half ago. Okay. Um, I picked up these figures. Figures? Yes. Um, <laughs> figures you'd pick up figures also uh beat says you brought drugs <laughs> you're not wrong um got Ooh. some totakus Ooh, crash totaku crash. that's actually it's actually nice looking it is that's really good i'm gonna show it to the camera i mean people can't look really that's uh yeah that's a crash amiibo all right visual and i got sack boy we got sack boy by the way these things smelt horrible they smell horrible yes that's weird because amiibo smell so nice they sm they smell wow. so bad so we got sack boy i love sack boy he's a cute boy got we got angry dad, dad. or rather he's the nice dad now let's just ignore all the people he innocently killed in god of war 2 and 3 Let's just ignore the fact that he's, like, literally for an achievement, you have to kill an innocent screaming woman purposely, like, three times to get an achievement. Um, let's just ignore all that, because he's he's now hot, so it's okay. <laughs> oh my it. god, they got him one for his dumb son? A Atreus? A a Atreus? Atreus? I don't know. I just like how there's the, the, the dad action button. And then button. the best one. Oh yeah, no, this one is actually super cool. I'm gonna put these down back here. Okay, last one. The blood... Oh, yeah, no, that one's super dope. The cool thing with that the is Bloodborne that... Bloodborne um, Hunter. In the packaging, it faced them... It was behind. Oh! So, like, the, like, the main so, menu. So they faced him behind... Yeah. Oh, that's that's actually super cool. Did you see the, the, um, the Figma for the Bloodborne Hunter? I think so. It's really good, too. Like, man, for a game that I myself don't, like... I think it's neat, and I technically have it because they gave it for me for free. But like, what a cool character! And I still think he should have got into Soul Calibur before oh, Geralt, be so cool. right? Oh, man. Wouldn't that have been so good? The thing with these two is that they came with like kind of like dioramas for each. Oh, really? So, like, um, where Sackboy came with like the the big planet background, and then on the front it says like the name of the car the fig figure, yeah, and the number. And I kept those because they look pretty cool. Nice. Where's Sanic? Uh, he got canceled. Yeah, he got canceled. Uh -huh. <laughs> he uh. got an email at work, and uh, they're like, "Please inform the customers if they ever pre-ordered the Sonic Totaku that it has been canceled." And I, I laughed. <laughs> I think it's because they also announced like, I mean, Sonic has so many figure lines. Um, there was another recent one that was shown off that looks pretty much like the exact same as the Totaku, but it's posable. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I'm sure they, they probably just said, maybe we should pull back on that. So, I don't know. Yeah, those are yeah. nice. And the second wave got announced. Um, Do you know who's in it? Um, the only one I pre-ordered, which was uh, the, the Watcher from Horizon Zero Dawn. I just like the robot raptor. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. And then two others that I don't remember. Because I didn't really care for them. Uh, I know, I know, Jin from Tekken. He's already out. He's already out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about the kid from um, Nino Kuni Two? He's already out. He's already out. Okay. Yeah. So there was only three that got announced for Wave Two. So okay. Far. So okay. One Interesting. of them was the Watcher. Other than that, that's it for the figures. Nice. Those are nice. They are. 
They're like. They're better than what people were describing them as online. I heard people saying like the paint looks bad and they don't they look good. They probably just got some like bad. They probably got bad. Yeah. I think all the time, whenever there's like a figure thing, people always get bad ones. Like the Crash one especially does look good. Yeah. Like I do think like just looking at him. The one that looks like the worst I think would be Kratos. Because if you like zoom, like if you look at his like eyes, <laughs> they kind of look off. Oh yeah. He kind of has Marth eyes. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, the, the... But looking at them from like as a normal person would, yeah, the distance like on a shelf, like it looks, it looks good. Yeah, that's cool. They're like PlayStation Amiibo, but without the functionality. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which I know some people say, then what's the point? And other people say, good, all the better. You know. So <laughs> it's a toss up on what people yeah, prefer. All those were only thirty dollars for me. Nice. Yep. Nice. Um. Yeah, that's about it for the figures. That's about it. Next, I um, mean, I I got my figures up there, which which <laughs> I don't know if you, you saw a little. Actually, no, that was about uh, was about forty five for me. All three of those? Yeah, all three. Okay. Yeah, like not each for the total. They're about fifteen each. So that's pretty good, yeah. actually. I'm talking about my my one piece girly girl figures, which you can watch my unboxing of on uh on YouTube. There, they're uh <laughs> quite quite a figure. So, <laughs> um. In terms of other life stuff, I have finally reached my 100 uh, pound goal. Yep, you're looking loss. you're looking way better than me. <laughs> you look fine. No, <laughs> I'm trying. I mean, I it mean, hel- it helps now that like I'm not no longer like literally for teaching. I'm I sit for about in total like 40 minutes in the eight hour day mm. because it's like lunch and maybe a period like of a couple minutes in class. You're not you're not sitting for teaching mm-hmm. so i'm i'm getting my exercise by yeah. basically walking around the classroom all day so at least i'm getting that but it's all about the food too yeah it's like 90 percent. i'm trying to watch my food a bit more but you, I, got, you gotta like i'm you so gotta weak yourself you can't i'm just, so weak you can't just like partially i know you know i don't know you're supposed to eat breakfast too yeah you should. Oh, it's tough <laughs> it's gonna be quite actually a... i've i've been having a little bit of, have you tried the mario cereal yet no, I haven't. I've actually been eating it. And? It's not bad. It's It tastes like a slightly fruitier uh, Lucky Charms. Like the actual... Um, the, like the... The corn bits. Like, not the corn bits, but the... Like, the not marshmallow stuff. The, the cereal... The cereal, actually, ...has a yeah. slight fruity flavor to it. Huh. And it's... I like it. I'm not a fan of fruity cereal. Oh, I do. I like my fruity cereal. So, no, I've been enjoying that. So, but I mean, otherwise, breakfast is still a slog for me. I'm trying to Trying to eat it. Man, it's just I'm not ready to eat that early in the morning. Fair enough. Other than that, that's about it for life stuff. Yeah, it's um, been a couple. Just... Now, in terms of what I've been playing and watching, that's a very different. Okay, story okay. Because I have been busy. Oh, I guess just just because I just remember one game that I was playing recently that I can just quickly say uh, I finally beat Pokemon like Ultra Moon fully. Okay, yeah, um, I saw you playing it. So, yeah, I went. I basically went through and did all the posts. Because I basically got up to right to the the Pokemon League for the first time and then stopped playing. So I decided, no, I'm okay. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to... I beat the Pokemon League. I did the post-game episode, the Rainbow Rocket one. Okay. It was actually pretty cool. There's some cool stuff there. I still think the original Sun and Moon are better games, even though there's new features in the in the new one. Mm-hmm. Um, but just in terms of the, how everything's structured. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, no, I beat that, and so basically all I need to do is um, level up one dude to evolve him, and evolve Cosmog into Cosmo in, and then I basically have every Pokemon that I want to take forward to Gen 8. So Decent, if yeah. that happens. Yeah, there's still the chance that Gen 8 won't allow you to transfer, in which case, well, then I have them all in that game, and that's mm-hmm. good enough for me, but uh, I'm fine either way, so. Cool. So, to start off, I'm going to start off from the earliest time okay um finished watch dogs too um did you watch any dogs i did watch a lot of dogs nice yeah okay please tell me there's one point in the game where you can hack a camera and you look in someone's house and you see some dogs and one of the members of your team is like man we really are the watch dogs no and then there's an explosion and yeah watch no no they didn't say that at all they did say watch dogs at once damn it okay okay um the ending kind of felt uh like there was no, they didn't really like raise the stakes. It was just kind of like do this, then do this, then do this, oh, and then, then end. Then you're like, then you take on the big. Brother, okay. And then. You so it's an it Ubisoft ending. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Yep. But it was really fun. Was about right. Um, the end mission was easier than 
some of the other missions. How the well? How many side missions did you do? I think all of them. Well, that's why. <laughs> for, all these games enough. it never expects people to to finish all the side missions. Yeah. There's a few games where they actually balance it for, hey, did you do all the side missions? Good, because now we'll make the final mission extra tough. You know, and I think that's smart. But for the most part, yeah, like a lot, all these open world games, they expect you to do like the bare minimum to pass. There's an, also um, the end mission was not nearly as cool as like two missions before where you like hack satellites. And you like hack around, you literally hack the planet. There you go, <laughs> you hack go the like, planet. You go to like China and like what? hack those like servers. Hacking China? It's like next level hacks. <laughs> and then like in the final mission, you just go to the a building and what's wrong? I just got a message on my phone, suggestion for Tanner, Devil Man Cry Baby. <laughs> That's okay, I'm good right now. But yeah, it's a, it's a good game. Um, I tried to platinum it, but the... Uh, Online trophies are bugged. Oh man, online trophies are the worst. Online trophies for single player games, I don't like them. I don't like online all. trophies, period. Yeah. I just, most of the time it comes down to like doing. Because you never know if you're like going to be able to get it because of like. Yeah, the conditions. Online people. Yeah. 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 Well, with this, it's, uh, you just, I just can't find a game. Yeah, because like yeah, for... no one's playing it. So I feel like. I almost feel like they should make time um, time lock trophies where it's like in the first year of the game oh, you can get cool. so that you can get like 105%, you know, here's all the trophies you need for platinum. Now here's like five extra online trophies. Yeah. You can get 105%, but eventually we'll shut them down, you know, something like that. So Yep. After Watch Dogs, I uh, the Overwatch Retribution event started. Did you retribute any Overwatches? Yes. Nice. I did. Um the new single player mode, it actually has a cutscene in it. What? Yeah. A cutscene? And it, it, Blizzard 2018 <laughs> Goatee! That one cutscene. And it is amazing. Like I Okay, wish so is, a... is it a pre-rendered or an in-game cutscene? Pre-rendered. Okay, so it's so it's not like it uses it's not like it's anything It's like self an it's like animated. Yeah. And it's but it's it's so yeah, but it's it's like it, it's basically playing a video file and not using in-game stuff, right? pretty much oh yes. see I so. so i was like because i was like oh man there's a cutscene. that means there's potential I'm, for i'm not entirely sure because i don't know exactly how it works okay they did look like pretty close to the in-game models but okay well we'll see you can usually tell if there's pixels like yeah. if you see movement and you can see that there's you know like it looks like a video file it's pre-rendered um but if, if it looks just like stuff moving and being told to move then it's in game you you might not have an eye for that obviously no, but uh <laughs> Uh, no, so I'm just wondering because I thought, oh, if it's an in-game cutscene, then that could lead to them experimenting for, say, a full single-player campaign, oh, okay. which would be super cool. But, like, yeah, if it's just a, playing a file, like, they can do that, so. Yeah. Ah, um, well. The story it revealed, it, it, it revealed, like, the mission that started Reaper on his journey to becoming evil. Okay, okay. He kind of, like, went off the books, but then he went off the books even more. <laughs> <laughs> Reaper, you're a loose cannon! <laughs> I need you to turn in your twin shotguns and badge. <laughs> um, but the actual like gameplay is you're just trying to escape um, from oh what is it called? It's it, it's a Venice location. Okay. And um, there's like it's pretty much like Team Fortress, not Team Fortress, uh, Left 4 Dead. Okay, I was gonna say Team Fortress. I'm like <laughs> that, that that's what Overwatch already is pretty much. There's um your basic enemy. There's um the sniper. Which mm -hmm. is pretty much a least skin of Widowmaker. Uh, I'm sure it is. Um, then there's the assassin, which is unique. Which Ooh. Um, teleports like on the walls, but sometimes she falls down. So do you think that might be a preview of the next character? No. I don't no? Think so. Okay. Um, <laughs> the funny thing is, though, that someone uh, hacked the game and they could play as some of the AI um, oh, yeah? people in the actual like PvP mode. No. Oh, cool. <laughs> so there's a like, heavy assault guy with like the two miniguns. Going around cool. and killing everyone. It has hmm. its own reload animation and everything, too. That, see, whenever I see that, I'm like, come on, just give us a bonus mode or something. Like yeah. a reverse mode, right? Like where oh, we're, you have to play as talent. You have to play as the bad guys. Or like even like a single player one where you have to stop them, right? Like, I don't know. I think there'd be cool stuff with that. Um, it's the same thing with up Uprising. The more you play, the more voice lines and the more lore you learn. Oh, okay. Um, Trying to squeeze that out of you. Yeah. Make, make sure that you know that you're playing it over and over to get all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the ending, uh, it got patched out, but before the patch, um, 
there's a airship that drops and you have to everyone has to get on it to leave yeah and there's some people who don't do that they like stay and try to like okay fight everyone. so so i kept i kept seeing people being like yes this is the best patch ever and i'm like i don't get what it's saying then it says the, the so the drop sh the thing will leave without them yes and but the mission will still be completed okay yeah okay because i kept seeing people post that and i'm like I don't get why that's <laughs> such a big deal. That sounds like a bad thing that you're being left behind. It's good because, like, those Genjis, they like to stay. Oh, it's always the Genjis. <laughs> okay. Um, besides that, the new skins are really good. Yep. The Agent 24 skin for Reaper is not as, like, great as I was hoping it would be. But okay. it's still a pretty cool skin. Okay. Pretty much him, like before he got. Yeah, in. but it, yeah, because but they couldn't just reuse the origin one, obviously. Yeah, obviously. So yeah, it's um, another one. The next one I want after that is the pajama May one. Pajama May's pretty good. She is best girl. She's the best character in the entire game, honestly. Do you know her buff makes her shoot the icicles like through people's heads now? She doesn't stop at just one target. <laughs> you know she is the best character in the game, actually. <laughs> See that I, I just realized that the, the the microphone is not on camera, so it just looks like I just went down to talk for some reason. But okay. <laughs> um. Besides that, I think that's it for Overwatch. That's it. Yep. Um. After that, I just a quick side thing. I platinum Burnout Paradise Remastered. Okay. Finally. Um. Did you burn out? I did burn out. Yeah. <laughs> did multiple burnouts for a trophy. No, I'm asking if you got burnt out on the game. Oh. <laughs> Get it? See, it works both ways. There's synonyms you're so good at this ah! um then finally what i really want to get the crux into okay god of war okay yes dad of war dad of war so that we don't confuse it with another game that is basically you know devil may cry in greece we're going to talk about a completely unrelated title called also called god of war <laughs> yeah uh featuring a character that look pretty similar but for the most part completely different featuring a gameplay style that is uh, for the most part, completely different, featuring loot box, not loot boxes, but loot based gameplay and stats and -based. was in like, you're actually getting oh, stats like and items and upgrades. But and... it's like, okay, let's let me, it's just, have... it's not my God of War. Four things I want to get into with this. Okay. okay but, okay. But for context, I did watch, um, the first 30 minutes of the game played by the best friends and it actually looks pretty good. It actually looks like, okay, this looks like an actual evolution of the original formula. So, because there's juggles and that was yeah. what got me. I'm like, okay, now that means that they're not completely just saying, what if God of War was left or last of us? So go ahead. All right. So the first thing I want to discuss is the setting. It is, I, I'm, it's so refreshing to be in like a new mythology. You don't like Greece? Not really. Not, not a ton. See, I loved Greece. I love Greek legend. Oh, uh, at first, like at first, like the first game was cool. What? Well, no, I played the third game, and that was cool at, at first. But then, like, there was like six games in that mythology. One, two, PSP one, PSP two, three, and then, uh, bu -bu 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 -bum, Revelation, As Ascension. Ascension. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. There's six. Um, that's a lot. You're right. No, I think that's time to move on. Um, the setting is just. It's like. I don't know how to put it into words. It's just so like nice and refreshing. Yeah. See like these new creatures and new enemies. Um, the world surfing is so cool. Oh yeah, I haven't seen I, that yet. Um, like I said, I've only seen the first half hour. About. Yeah, yeah. It's way the first boss fight is like insanely awesome. Cool. It's like well, that's to be fair. That's that's the norm for God of War. It's usually the first boss and the last boss are spectacles. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and you'd be lucky to find a boss anywhere in between there. <laughs> but the first boss, it's I without getting a spoilers, it's just like one dude versus another dude. Oh, just like it's a dude th boss th throwing each other like across. The oh, map. interest. That's interesting. Yeah. Because normally I think of like the Colossus of Rhodes or like just you know normal, running on right. Cronus. You know. So okay, that's interesting. He's, his name's literally the Stranger. Oh, that's a good name. Yeah. Who? But he's obviously a god. Oh yeah. 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 Um. Low key, it's probably a god. <laughs> it's not Loki. It's not Loki. It's not Loki. It's not Loki. No. You sure? I'm sure. You ever seen Loki? Yes. And this is not Loki. 
this guy. The, this god that has this power is not related to Loki in any way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, next thing I want to talk about is combat. The best thing in this game, I think, um, it is so fluent and versatile. There's so many things, like so many combat opportunities you can approach the enemies from. Um, for instance, you can like hack a guy with the, you can juggle the guy with the axe. Yes, I've seen the juggles. The juggles are down. cool. And then another ability you can like hold R2 and he like does like the animation where he brutally kills someone. Okay. And then when you've done that, you can throw the axe um, into another dude. He's like stunned. And then you can run up to another guy, start punching him. Yes, I've seen them. I've seen the punches. They're cool. They're and good. As he's stunned. You can call back the axe. And then throw it into the guy and then finish it off. So essentially what you're saying is this is what a Thor video game should have been. Yeah. The, the hammer works as Thor's hammer. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, I hope the like future superhero games use this combat system because it is just so good. Yeah. No, I can there, see that for there, sure. There's a lot of combat branches and all that type of thing. Um, story. It is, without going, I don't want to go into details, obviously. But, yeah. Um, it is a lot more <coughs> interesting than... I'm just going to kill everyone. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> like, I'm not going to... Even though I have such... I have, you know, good nostalgia for the original God of Wars, I will never say it has a good story. <laughs> yeah. God of War 1 is literally... Ares! <laughs> and then Ares is like, lol. And then he's like, oh, I'm so mad at you, Ares! <laughs> and then Kratos kills his family. He's like, Ares! Ares, why'd you kill my family? <laughs> and then Ares is like... Oh... Uh, and then, then God of War 2, it's, what if I went back in time and killed Ares again? Kratos, you can't mess with the time stream. Arr! And then 3 is just like, I'm just going to kill the no, gods. No, 3 is <laughs> just like, what if I, I killed Ares? Let's kill them all! <laughs> kill Ares, no, let's kill them all. Kill them all. And then finally in the last second, it's he's like, what if I release hope onto the people? No, I'm just going to kill them all! <laughs> <laughs> Kills them all. Rip. It killed all of Greece. It's gone. He's the reason Greece yes. fell. Yes. Kratos is the reason the Greek economy is in shambles. Because he single-handedly <laughs> destroyed it. He will not stop until every single idol, including money, is gone out of Greece. Just He spent like five years just hoarding coins and then breaking them with his head, with his like it's swords. He's like, oh, I hate these. Um, I'm really interested to see like how. Kratos got to the Norse mythology and like watch it never be told. <laughs> yeah, probably watch not. it just be like it just be like like the last cut scene is like you see him look at a boat and he's like, That's the boat I, boat I took from Greece. And then that's it. <laughs> Nothing else. Or no, like in the in the last in the end of the third game, he just falls off a cliff. Yes. And, and he, he falls just, he in, just falls yes. into Norse mythology. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell is this place? Uh, well, the, the, I do like how, like, in the PSP God of War games, there was always the implication that all the other religions simultaneously coexist. Yeah. Because, like, you get, like, the jinn, and, like, there's all the Persian gods, right? So, like, that was always a thing where it's, like... So when people are like, but the Norse gods exist in Greece, too. And it's like, no, you guys, you didn't even play the PSP games, you losers. It makes sense. <laughs> so, we really are the God of War, says Beat. <laughs> I was initially thinking it'd be like, oh, we're going to kill a bunch of gods this time. But it's like, it, it's back to like, the you're just killing the, oh, the smaller kind wait of... Wait till Dad of War 3. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm about to start killing we, Thor and Yeah, Thorin. Dad of War 3 is going to go full on to like him storming, you know, of uh, what's it called? Asgard. Asgard storming Asgard. <laughs> Breaks the Rainbow Bridge. <laughs> it's, it's cool. That um, sounds so cool. I'm actually mad now because now that I'm really thinking about it, it's like... Just take all the cool stuff in Thor, like, you know, Marvel Thor, and then, like, put it in with Kratos. There's so many things in God of War that I'm like, oh, oh I know that name. Like, they, oh, yeah. they reference Bifrost, like, the, the Dark Elves, even. And, like... That one's that one's interesting, because I did not know that was a... I thought Dark Elves was a Marvel thing. No. So that one got me. That one, when I saw the Dark Elves, I'm like, oh, so that's not just Thor the Dark World being stupid. That's actually Norse mythology. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. If it, you can, I don't want to say it because it's like almost a spoiler. It was a spoiler, not a spoiler for me, but like it was cool discovering it. There's, you can travel to all the nine realms. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. All of them. I've only traveled to one. That's crazy. But like, 
no wonder this game took five years yeah to that's actually like because i saw the map for at least the one world and i'm the like Midgard. i'm like that's a pretty big map but if you go through all of them that's a big map yeah, there's like the the wheel that you can like go to like niflheim and asgard and midgard and that's cool oh, yeah <sighs> part of it me is... kind of wants the game now and this is why i want us to talk about our game of the years yes because this is spoiler alert this is my game of the year so far okay 2018 fair enough we'll get to that we we'll get we'll get to that talk eventually for sure uh but first off we have the news if you don't have anything else to to say about uh i've been watching a few things too. okay go but... yeah yeah go ahead no i mean just 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 right. say them you don't well, have I to watch say... guardians 2 again yep so i prefer it over guardians 1 i see i still prefer guardians 1 myself we'll talk more about it yeah when, when we get to um, the the marvel phase 3 recap my friends uh drag me to a quiet place to watch and it is did you have a quiet theater um yes for the most part but then my friends who were like really drunk oh your friends were those guys they were just snacking on popcorn and like i just kept looking over i've <laughs> I, i've heard that like that because the movie is so quiet it amplifies any small sounds like that are it in does. it so and it, it was annoying but oh they, that could be they bad actually put the popcorn down yeah i would too um i don't want to get into spoilers but it's an excellent horror movie that's good there are a few flaws um, I mean, especially the ending. There's no, there's no such thing as a flawless horror movie. Like, fair enough. Like, th- it is an inherently flawed genre. But yeah, like that's good. It's yeah, good to know. I'd recommend it. Yeah, no. If I, you like horror movies, go see it. I, I like, I like the occasional spook, the occasional, you know, big scare. Mm-hmm. But okay, would you say it? Okay, big question. Are there jump scares, or um, is it more creepy horror? There are jump scares, but it's not like it doesn't. They're not cheap jump scares. Okay, not cheap There's jump scares are okay. cheap jump scare. Okay, but, that, that's good. Yeah. I just don't like movies that are just uh, repeated cheap jump scares. Yeah. Like, that is that is not horror. But the world that's, like, set. Yeah. That it's set in is, like, so interesting. And I don't want to see, like, how these people, like, work. Okay. In, the, in this, like, quiet place. Okay. <laughs> Pretty cool. much. Cool, yeah. Uh, I'll give it a watch, and then maybe we can have a discussion a little bit more later. Yeah. Um, I wa- and finally, um, I started watching The Punisher. Okay. And it is really violent. I've heard. Um, like, such hammers into faces. Frank, Frank Castle does like to kill so people. He is so well casted, though. Nice. Like, oh my god. At first, like, before he became the Punisher, I was like, oh yeah, that's Shane from The Walking Dead. But now I see him as the Punisher from okay. the MCU. Okay. Um, Do you know in the comics he's War Machine now? Is he? Yeah. And now that you think about it, he deserves the name War Machine a lot oh more than god. War Machine, right? <laughs> War Machine's a nice guy. He doesn't deserve that name. You know, like, he should be, like, Peacekeeper. And, you know, <laughs> like, Punisher Punisher is more of the war machine, so. Yeah. Um, the latest episode I watched was episode three. And it delved into his, like, past. You know, oh, yeah. Netflix episodes, which like, go into the past. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was really dark and violent. Do you get to see his family get murdered? and? Well, you, you see that, like, through the first three episodes. Oh, okay. It kind of just reveals more and more and more. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's about it for my week. All right. Weeks. News time. news time we got we got a, we got a lot and i this time i did do it in reverse chronological order so meaning good, good idea from the first part of the week to now okay so first up peacekeeper <laughs> was an actual character right i don't know is that a marvel character it does i sound like a marvel it could character. be there's so many now i just made it up um okay so uh first up uh they announced the last pokemon of gen 7 uh zero zia Ziraora. 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 Uh it looks like a cross between Pikachu, Lucario, and Renamon from Digimon. You don't know the last one, but it's basically like an electric Lucario type. Um I'm gonna bet money this dude's gonna be in Smash Switch. He looks like a character made for merchandising, and he has the proportions of like a Greninja, a Lucario, a Zoro Arc, all those types. He's fighting electric type, and he is massive fur bait. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, hundred oh, percent. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, <laughs> he looks kind of cool. Um, but it's definitely like you look at him and you're like, that's a character made for merchandise. Um, which is fine. Uh, he, he might already like be playable in Smash Five right now. He oh yeah no. Sakurai's it, probably playing as like right well because Sakurai basically he he revealed like the way it works is. Uh, like when when he was working on Smash Four, he was just shown all the Pokemon of Gen Six at the time, yeah. And then he was like told pick one, <laughs> and so he's like, 
I don't know, Greninja is kind of <laughs> sure. cool, sure. And so then he put in Greninja, and so I'm sure it was the same with Smash Switch. Uh, did you, although did you did you hear the interview about him talking about Detective Pikachu? No, it's really interesting. He was like, Detective Pikachu, sir, is sure is surprising because. Detective Pikachu breaks about half the rules I was given to not allow Pikachu to, to do in Smash Bros. Hmm. So he's like, I feel like they're softening up on Pokemon because there's like five or six things there that I was not, I was told specifically do not allow Pikachu to do in Smash Bros. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really interesting. Huh. So cool. Next up, uh, Konami, everyone's favorite company of, uh, of, of dead game IPs. Uh, Understood. Dead game company. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, well, uh, there's a couple Konami news stories on here, but uh, most okay. of them are more, hey, the, we we own millions of great franchises that are now dead. The first one is they repurchased the uh, Goemon franchise rights. So, do you remember, um, uh, what's his face? Yusuke in Persona 5. Yes. Do you remember his first Persona? Yes. The, like, the Kabuki actor with the giant... Um, pipe. Yusuke's first persona. I have uh, the main character's persona in my head right now. Think about like he's kind of like he looks like a big actor. He's like the white face paint with the red lines. He has the giant pipe. Oh yes, yes, yes. yes so yes. that's Goemon. He's a historical figure in Japan. He's essentially Japan's Robin Hood. Uh, Konami has the Goemon franchise where it's like. It's a really good franchise starring that character. Mm -hmm. They repurchased the rights to that. So, a lot of people are saying, like, a collection... Like, uh, his games on, like, uh, the Super Nintendo and the N64 are amazing games. Like, the Goemon's Adventure on N64 is up there with Ocarina Time for best action platformers. Wow. Um, action platformer? Yeah. Well, because it's, like, because it's not just, like, an action game. Like, it's kind of, like, it's a 3D... You consider Ocarina of Time a platformer? You jump around a bit. So that doesn't make well, it like, well, no, but I'm talking about like when I, because most people think action game, like there is jumping in levels, right? Like it's not just a flat plane. There's the verticality to it. Like you'll have to climb up stuff. You'll have to jump across stuff. I'd say that's a platformer. Like, like I, the, definitely more action than platformer. It's like 0.1% platformer. But what I mean is like, because most, because especially during the time of the N64, an action game would usually mean a flat plane. There was no verticality whatsoever like think about like i i say any game that features platforming for a puzzle is a platformer okay i'd say it's i'd say it's more action than platform but i'd say so sure you, you have you have no control over the jumping but you have jumping period so i'd say yeah. i'd say he's a bit of platforming but what i'm saying is like in terms of like 3d action games it's one of the best on the n64 okay, okay, okay. um so that's cool they rebought the um the rights to that, and so people are either thinking HD collection or even just a re-release, or maybe they're going to be putting it on, say, like the N64 Mini, if that's a thing, um, or Pachinko. Or Pachinko. And with that, next story. <laughs> yes, next story. Uh, Jackbox Party Pack number five is a thing. Uh, it has Jackbox and other games, so it's bringing Jackbox back. We haven't had Jackbox since, I think, the first one. I think Party Pack 2 and 3 had, like, got other games for it. But the actual... Or You Don't Know Jack, rather. The actual You Don't okay. Know Jack is back. Like, yeah. Jackbox. No, sorry. Not Jackbox. The actual You Don't Know Jack okay. is back. Um, so that's cool. But otherwise, it's uh, more games. Those games are great at parties. Um, I will always... Like, those are games. Always bring them out at parties. Like, those are the best with big groups of people. Um, I'm not a fan of them. So. What? I mean, like, I enjoy them, but I'm not, like... Oh man, I can't wait for the next one. Oh know? yeah, no, fair enough. I mean, because it's just because I, I, you know, I have family over a lot, like a oh, big yeah. family gathering. So whenever there's a big family gathering, it's like let's bring out Jackbox because no, that's like no one comes to my house. Oh so. yeah, no, fair enough. <laughs> um, no, so those are fun for me. Um, I haven't bought any of them. I haven't bought four, mm. and I don't have any of them on the Switch. But I kind of want. I kinda, when I was actually on vacation in Montana, there I was thinking like <laughs> might be fun to get it on the Switch there, but uh, I didn't. So nerd, haha. <laughs> He called you a nerd. Beat called you a nerd. How are you going to take that? <laughs> he just said I have no friends. <laughs> at least I'm your friend. At least he's honest. Okay, next up. The Animal Crossing website uh, became a creepypasta of... Um... Okay, so basically what happened was is on the Animal Crossing website, 
uh, there was an update to it that broke the website. Yes. It completely broke. Well, uh, this was before this part. So yeah. it broke the website. Um, there was obviously stuff leading to like switch news pages. There was stuff leading to wrong games. There was like new places that didn't exist before. There's old places were gone. All instances of the Wii U were wiped from the site. So like something's happening there. Some guy at Nintendo was like, whoa, hey, we got to pull back. But they didn't have a saved version of the site how it originally was. Yeah. So they reverted it to the site when it was initially in a draft and all the text was replaced with excerpts from Franz Kafka's The Metamorphosis. A I think we covered this last time. Did we? Yes. Did we? I, I believe we did. Or did we just talk about this outside of the podcast? No, we talked about it. Oh, yeah, podcast. no, I think we did. Well, anyways, well, I think it might just got picked up late on the news site then. I, I did. Okay, well... Uh, regardless, that story still haunts me, and it means we're getting Animal Crossing at uh, E3 um, for sure. Side th note: um, the, Did you hear about the Punch Out website? Ooh, no! Yeah, it got it. Something similar happened, but instead of being reverted to an older version, it's just gone. Well, R.I.P. Punch Out, you were a good <laughs> franchise. The website's gone. That is. That's weird. The weird thing about that though is like there's websites for SNES games still up. That's cool. Like, there's old websites still up. Like, Nintendo keeps them going, so... Yeah, so okay. hopefully that points... I think, I think it might have just been on this, the, the, the news website I got it from. Like, they just reported on it late then. Oh, so yeah, probably. Yep. Okay, uh, Yokai Watch 4 was announced for the Switch. More like Yokai uh, Watch in Japan, Snore. In Japan only at this point. Because <laughs> we didn't get 3 yet. Which sucks, because 3 takes place in America... And I love seeing how Japan thinks about America because it's so hilariously stereotyped. It's amazing. Um, we might get this one, but there's a chance we might not also because we didn't get three. And it's not as big of a thing here anymore. Mm -hmm. um, in Japan, it's still pretty big, but it's definitely not the same size as it was at one point. Like at one point, people said, it's the Pokemon killer. And it like it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't at all. Thank you, Beat. I know I did good on that one. I mean, Yokai Watch um, is as big as Pokemon was. Oh yeah, it was. But even in Japan, it's 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 uh, going back down a bit because it was. Um, uh, well, the show ended, which was a big thing. But now there's a new show out, which is a gritty reboot of it, mm. featuring like, what if these like, because Yokai are like monsters in Japan, right? It's like, what if we made it and had the monsters be actual monsters that are terrifying? So it's actually kind of like a horror show now. Hmm. Uh, so it's an interesting redo on it. But for the most part, it's like, it's not as big. Um, okay, um, after that, uh, the Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 and 2, they revealed the X Challenge mode. Did you see, did you watch the trailer? I didn't watch the trailer, but so, I'm not Okay, sure. so at the very, very end, they showed Mega Man there in an, uh, a recolored armor set. So like one we haven't seen before, you wouldn't know that. But then two bosses are on the screen. So it had the penguin, oh, oh, and yeah, then yeah, Frost Walrus comes out. Yeah, uh, those guys are from like Mega Man X One and like X Four, like completely different games. Yeah, like that is a, a Super Nintendo game and a PlayStation One game. It's like That'd the, be cool. So like it's a, what it is. It's a bunch of it looks to be a bunch of pre done like double boss fights, which is crazy because like there's all going to be a lot of crossover there. Mm -hmm. Now it probably won't extend to. Um, x like seven and eight because they're like 3d totally you can't you can't bring them back right they are 3d games mm -hmm. so but it's still really cool and, and a neat feature that i think is uh is worth it i'm what, definitely is there picking a release up date for my, the x collection not yet no i um, thought it was like yet. i swear there was i think it is but it's way later than like even the original one and two legacy for switch so that's coming out august comes to mind yeah, something like that. It's later. It's summer. Yeah. It's summer for sure. Um, but that's cool. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, again, it's broken up into one and two. One being one to four. Two being, you know, um, five to eight. And some people say there's no point to buy the second collection because six and seven are bad games. But uh, five and eight are really good in my eyes. So I think they're worth it for those oh, two okay. alone. Um, especially eight. Because I think 8 is, like, it's what a modern Mega Man game should be. There's a lot of, like, features and replay value and hidden secrets that, like, have a lot of cool stuff. So, like, 8 for sure is worth it. 8, like, because it's another 20 bucks each. So, like... That's pretty good. So, like, yeah. Like, for 20 bucks, it's a HD PS2 game. Like, that's... I think that's great. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But if most people are probably going to get X Collection 1, and I think that's fine. Uh, it is getting a 1 and 2 pack uh, for all systems. And Japan's getting a 1 and 2 collector's pack. It's kind of cool. But, uh, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, after that, we have... So Sega asked fans to vote for costumes for Persona 3 and 5. Dancing All Night, Dancing... Or Dancing Sun Night, Dancing Moon Night. Uh, and actually... I thought this was fake. What? The Sonic costume. That's real. The Yakuza, Sonic, and Virtua Fighter costumes are real. I was told it was fake. Who said that? It's the guy on the internet. Well, that guy lied to you. Those are super real. You know what's not super real, Tanner? What? The release date for It'll this game. come, dude. Okay, I don't... So you're a new fan to Japanese I, games. I, you ma- do not know <laughs> how long we usually have to wait for these things. Two years is not unheard of. Two years? Yes. Oh my god. It's getting better nowadays, and they're probably going to announce it at E3, but like, two years is not unheard of. Welcome to Japanese gaming. Um, yeah, no, the Sonic stage and music oh, were fake. Oh, yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, no, they're not doing that. But, so, um, we because we had the two weeks off, they not only had the vote and then the winners were announced, so the winners are Yakuza costumes for Persona 5, Virtua Fighter costumes for Persona 3, and a Sonic costume for Morgana in uh, Persona 5. So those are real. Okay. And uh, the, the Yakuza ones are great because everyone has a different second meaning. Like, some of them are pretty basic. The character of Ryuji is dressed up as Ryuji. Hmm. Uh, Futaba is dressed up as the information dealer who loves technology from Yakuza. Okay. Um... One uh, Makoto loves to punch, just like the other. So, like, yeah, like they're all <laughs> they, they all they all match up. Haru is dressed up as Haruka. Oh, so okay. like, so like it all they, they all have a Makes second sense, meaning, it? yeah, yeah. Uh, which is cool. Uh, the Virtual Fighter ones not so much, um, and the Sonic's just there because he was the third place one, so he only got one. Hmm. So, but that's neat. Um, and as Majima though, I don't know why, but uh, you know what? Sure, we'll we'll start incorporating the Anne Everywhere system then. You don't know anything about what I'm talking about, do you? Nope. That's fine. Um, <laughs> okay, next up, uh, Disgaea 1 Complete is confirmed for the West uh, on Switch and PS4. So it's an HD remake of the first Disgaea game. You're not even looking at what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that yeah, I know, I'm just, Okay, I'm reading um, and that's cool. I think Disgaea 1 is a classic. Like, it's, it's, a, it's an all-time... One of my favorites. Um, maybe I'll finally beat it. Maybe I'll finally beat it. <laughs> though I don't know if you know, but like the level cap in those games is like nine ninety nine ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Oh my god! Your, you know when you attack in a video game and the numbers appear on the screen? Yeah. By about halfway to that, your numbers are off the screen. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> it's one of those games where the numbers can break the game if you go too high Jeez. there's no upper limit so um i hate the disguise art style what are you talking about it's the best part um it also so it's getting a collector's edition featuring the main female character on a mouse pad but because she is flat chested it is not a booby mouse pad it's just a flat one of her <laughs> which is hilarious and i think is great um i love that game Speaking of HD remakes, uh, Senran Kagura Burst, the uh, original 3DS Senran Kagura game, is getting a PS4 remake, so that's coming out. Um, same with the Switch game for Senran Kagura, the one where you massage them with oh the God. HD rumble. Those are oh, conformed for the West, and I have applied for uh, review copies, because I love Senran Kagura. It's garbage, but it's my garbage. <laughs> Uh, Iconoclasts announced for the Switch. This game, I don't know if you know about Iconoclasts. So it's one of those games where it's like, it's been in development for 11 years by like one guy. And it's like gaming perfection. So like, I've heard great things about the PS4, PC versions of all that. And um, yeah, I watched a short video uh, by the best friends on it. And it looks really, really good. Um, and it's on the Switch. Get that. Get it. I have so many games to Tru- play, dude. It's an indie game. It won't take long. I know, but... Trust me. I have okay. a lot of indie games, too. <coughs> okay. Uh, I apologize for my cough. Still getting over cold. Um, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. They announced a collector's edition for the game. And it doesn't include all the characters. <laughs> Does not include the season pass. You add one job arc system works. Great. Um, they don't Siegfried. 
in Soul Calibur 6. That's big news. That's weird news. Because Nightmare is Siegfried. So, <laughs> how's it going to work? We don't know. It's weird. Because, uh, like, literally, you break off Nightmare's armor and you see Siegfried under there. So, it's like, okay. Uh, is he's cool. Like, is it, like, good coal and evil coal? Yeah, that's that's you are so accurate. You have no idea down to the color scheme. Oh my you god, are, you are one hundred percent accurate. Um, so uh, Bandai Namco announced My Hero Academia One's Justice is coming to the West, except they screwed up and got the name wrong. It is simply called My Hero One's Justice. They got rid of the word Academia, which is a bit of a problem when that is the series name. <laughs> um, though it's understandable because they are also releasing. Little Witch Academia, which is a separate, unrelated show that shows game at roughly the same time. Huh. So probably to avoid confusion, they picked the one which more people know about and change the name of to fix it. So, yeah, it makes sense. Fair enough. Um, no, it's not a new nightmare because literally you break off Nightmare's armor in Soul Calibur 6 and you see Siegfried under there. Like, it's not <laughs> a new nightmare. It is the same nightmare. Um, though, of course, the game is, uh, you can customize them, so it's not a huge deal. Um, so, there was a big Sega press conference. We have a few Sega stories. A few Sega stories here. Uh, the first up thing that was announced was Sega Ages, which is a announcement that Sega will be porting, uh, not Sega, but M2. Do you know who M2 is? They are one of Sega's, like, internal companies, but they're the ones who did the, um, Sega 3DS classics, like the 3D ones. Um, oh, okay. so, like... These ports are not just ports. They are one-to-one -one arcade recreations with new features and new, like, modes that they made themselves. Okay. So, they are super enhanced ports of old games uh, with some different features. Like, for example, like, yeah, they're re-releasing Sonic 1 again. You know, I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> they're adding in the drop dash from Sonic Mania. That's pretty cool. That's a brand new feature yeah. that, like, wasn't in the game at all. Uh, they're And they're also adding in the ability... To play that this 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 how deep they go, you can turn on a mode that turns the game into the little known arcade version of Sonic One that rearranges stages, redoes stuff. So like they're adding in a mode to let you play an arcade version of it, mm. which has never been re released before. So like they do that sort of stuff, right? Uh, so that's cool. But my problem with it is they said we're gonna stick with arcade and Genesis titles for now, but in the future we might do Dreamcast and Saturn. Okay. Dreamcast and Saturn games have never really had re-releases. So, like, why are you holding them ransom? Like, those are the ones... We don't want to buy Sonic 1 again. Like, come on. You so I, I don't. I don't like Sonic 1. I think Sonic 1's a bad game. Sonic 2 is where it gets good. Sonic 1 is, like, Mega Man 1. It's a, not that good. Like, it's it started the franchise, but it's not that good. Okay. Um... So that's kind of cool. Um, a couple of games they announced are pretty good, but nothing spectacular right now. Um, next thing they announced is uh, Sega came out and announced their own Sega Mega Drive Mini, which in for us will be the Genesis Mini. Oh, okay. Because in Japan and Europe, they use the wrong name. Is the... What's that game? The Mega Drive is the wrong name. Is Power Stone going to be on it? That's Dreamcast. Okay. <laughs> that's... Sorry. You're way ahead. That's way ahead. <laughs> Um, I have, like, no knowledge of, like, Sega consoles. Fair enough. Yeah, well, because that's the thing, and I've, I, I, I talk to people about this. The Genesis in Canada and all Sega consoles were not big. They were small. Yeah, pe people love Mega Drive as a name. I don't, I don't get it. Um, <laughs> but the Sega, Sega consoles did not catch on here at all. You were either a Nintendo kid or a no video game kid. You might have a Genesis, but you also had a Nintendo and played that more. Yeah, like your parent probably like accidentally got you the Genesis. Yeah, like of the... it wasn't, it wasn't a thing here much. Like I, like I, I had at my babysitters there was a Genesis, so I'd play that a bit. Yeah, but there was also all the Nintendo consoles, right? So like, yeah, Genesis did not catch on here. Uh, but uh, so they announced it, a mini version, and it looks like same size as the SNES Mini. Um. Well, beat your American. It doesn't count that you had a Genesis. It's totally different in the States. The Genesis took off way more in the States than here. Um, but here's the thing. It's not being made by Sega themselves. 
It's being made by At Games, the same company that makes the crappy already pre-done like plug-and-play Sega oh, Genesis no. that have bad sound quality and emulation issues. Oh, no. So people are like, no, don't judge him. It could be good. I'm like, nah, it's going to be bad. Um, it's an uphill battle with them. Yeah, well, that's Sega. All right. Uh, but what is good and I'm excited for? This is the good one. Shenmue 1 and 2 HD. Oh, my God. No, I'm so excited. Um, yeah, no Switch. It might be on the Switch eventually, but, um... I wonder why. Well, I think I think it's because that these were actually... They've had them for a long time and like, they're only announcing I'm not like them now. i Switch port begging, but no, I'm just I know. Like, it's just a no, I get that. Yeah. Um, but I think it's because, um, talking to, uh, Liam Robertson, Dr. Cupcakes on Twitter, uh, we're, we're pals. We talk. Um, did you know that? I did, yeah. Yeah. Um, he basically has said that, like, um... It is not, like, they've had this for a long time, and we're just waiting to announce it. So, they, before the Switch was really a thing, they've had this. Oh. So, okay. they might be working on it at the side, but, yeah, like, this is this was a pre-Switch thing that they worked on. Okay. So, um, but, uh, who? Those games are divisive. Um, it's like, it's, so I played uh, basically as much of... Shenmue 1 as my Dreamcast would let me um, because it just won't read disc 2. I got it up to disc 2 and it's like I tried to put it in and it won't read it. So I'm like, well, that sucks. It's a four disc game. Oh, okay. um, and like it is the craziest, most realistic simulator for living in Japan I've ever seen. You can go into like every building. You can do anything that you can see. It's so cool. But here's the problem. It's almost too realistic. What's that? The bus comes at 3 o'clock and it's 9 a.m.? You gotta wait. <laughs> and it's like... And so I, I'm like, guys, how do I, like, advance time? And they're like, oh, go do something else. You know, find, find something to do. And I'm like, but then what if I don't get back in time to catch the bus? They're like, well, you know, you gotta plan that. And I'm like, <laughs> wait... <laughs> So it's that realistic, and they're like, yeah. So the second game adds a fast-forward function, which was super oh. needed. But, like, the first one, I don't know if they're going to add it or not, because, woof. Um, <laughs> it's a cool game franchise, but definitely one I can see people being like, this is the worst thing ever. Because it's, like, so realistic, you know? like it's, But it's really cool. It's, like, super aesthetic. And uh, leading up to the release of Shenmue 3, this was, like, it made sense. Mm -hmm. uh, because oh, that's yeah, not sure. being done by Sega themselves. Uh, that's being done. They just gave it to the original creator and mm -hmm. let his company make it. So, okay. Uh, so that's nice. That's going to be good. And the last big... <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. The best The best line was there's some beat just quoted one of my favorite lines. is like, like at one point you learn, and because again, this takes place in Japan, right? So it's like you, you're walking around. So like literally Ryo is like, he's looking for someone with information on his father. And one guy says, oh, yeah, uh, the, the Chinese people in town should know about it. So you, as Ryo, walk around talking to people like... Hello, I am looking for some people from China. And like, so then you'll talk to people and they'll be like, I don't know anyone from China. And like, or like, I've heard rumors that the man in this shop is from China. So you go up to him and you talk. And so it's like, it's like, how is it going, Takamaki-san? And he's like, do you know anyone from China? And so then the old man looks at Ryo and he's like, years ago, I was Chinese. <laughs> And, like, what he's trying to say is he used to live in China, and then he moved to Japan, and oh, he became, yeah. like, you know, technically a Japanese citizen. Yeah. But just the way he says it is he looks at the camera, he's like, years ago, I was Chinese. And it's so great. Oh, oh the voice acting is so so stilted in 90s. Like, it's so good. Yeah. Like, the main character is just like, like, you can get Gashapon machines, and you will pop one out, and he'll be like, wow, it is supersonic. Awesome. <laughs> That's enough for now. <laughs> it's so good. And they confirmed, like, full, like the English dialogue is back. It's so good. Um, it's so good. Um, yeah. Uh, and then the last announcement that they had there, the big one, uh, for us at least, kind of, is they, they had a countdown. And it's like, we asked uh, uh, Japanese Sega fans what franchise we should bring back. And they had a top ten countdown, right? And it actually, like, Shenmue was, like, number, like, three or four. Yeah. And so then it stopped on the countdown and showed the trailer for that. But then it kept counting back up, right? And number two was Jet Set Radio. And people were, oh. like, people were like, Jet Set, Jet Set, let's go. Nope. 
went no announcement went to number one and it was a franchise that the west barely cares about called soccer wars so i myself was in the boat of soccer wars that's stupid why no one cares about that and then i played uh well i i, I was part of a playthrough of we got one of those games in the west we got number five only okay uh which is fine because they're kind of self-contained uh it's essentially a dating sim crossed with a giant robot strategy game that sounds interesting it is actually kind of awesome and so i went from man i don't care about soccer wars stupid to no i want this game to come to the west it's kind of cool it's um it's pretty good um so yeah that was the last announcement for sega there there was a couple other ones but they were all japan only like uh announcements for the fantasy star online and stuff which we don't get so yeah uh, right after that, there was a um, Kingdom Hearts conference thing uh, for the mobile game, but they did have a small Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer showing off that uh, there's a place called the Classical Kingdom, which is basically Sora playing Game & Watch games. Huh. Literally, like not even trying to hide the fact that they are Game & Watch games. You know what Flat Zone looks like in Smash Bros? Yeah. The screen turns into flat zone and Sora is playing Game & Watch games. <laughs> oh my God. So there's 20 uh, different Game & Watch games that you can play based on super old black and white Disney shorts. And like they have a full, like each of them has a campaign, if you will, where you have to get through them. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, no, it's, it's kind of weird seeing Sora playing what looks like a game console in the game like you see him that would and then be weird it's weird but then again in terms of kingdom hearts in terms of the weirdness of it that's kind of down there there's weirder stuff in kingdom hearts as we talked about in our retrospective on everything about kingdom hearts um that was an episode that was an episode <laughs> speaking of square enix uh there was a new octopath trailer did you see that one i did yes i did yes revealing two more of the characters whose names are again continuing to spell out octopath which is great we have uh, the Hunter, Hanit, and the Thief, Therian. So two to more roles. The Hunter can um, provoke and the yeah. Thief can steal. And it revealed that the game is going to have kind of a morality system where yeah, it's like cool. you have the rogue and noble action. So if you're a good guy, you'll do good things. If you're a bad guy, you'll do bad things. So yeah, get a choice with that. So that's kind of cool. Remember when Goofy dies? <laughs> and I like how they're all talking about the, I lost my blank. Oh, it's great. Kingdom Hearts is wonderful. Um... <laughs> Next up, uh, Dark Souls Switch was delayed. I'm, and kind of, I'm kind of like half glad, half disappointed. Like, why is it a bad thing? They're making the game better. It's not like they said, oh, you know, looking at the fiscal quarter, it's better if we don't. No, it's like yeah, they, it's like, they it's like... literally came out and said, we want the game to run well. We are going to delay it to make sure it runs well. Isn't that the better thing to do? It was nice to have the idea of like the, all of the, the games coming out on all three platforms at the same time. Like, Switch is finally part of that. Mind you, the Switch is being done by a different company. Oh, is it? Yes, it's being ported by a different company. So it is It is not the same. It's not them working on it. It's another company. But, again, it's better to release a game But uh, Summer 2018 isn't doesn't sound great, you know? If they were to give, like, a, like a month. Well, because they don't know how long it'll take to make it till it's a good playable way. They're, they're going to be just pressing out each day until it's good. And then once they realize, yep, we're in a good playable state, then they'll probably announce it. But summer's probably going to summer is probably going to be like September. So it's better that the game comes out good. Would you rather it come out bad and then like months later, they're like, we got a patch to make it good? Well, I guess, but... No, it's better to release a game when it's done. I'd rather it be like that. Yeah, but that hype's gonna be gone by the time it comes out. On the it's Switch. Dark Souls Remastered. And then be like, oh, I already Pe got it on the PS4, so, and I'm not gonna no, get it on the so Switch. No, but so many, so many people want it on the Switch for portability. I guess, but because I mean, if people are, if the portability isn't a factor, they're just gonna get it on PlayStation anyways, because it will run better on PlayStation regardless. I guess I, I just like the idea of it coming out on Switch along with the other. Yeah, I I don't think it's a big deal. Yeah, I don't think it's enough. that big of a deal. Mind you, I'm not super Dark Soulsy, so. Uh, Monster Hunter announced a new Elder Dragon just it's, out of nowhere. Yeah. I know they said there would be an April update, but I expected another, like... And then, like, two days and, later, it actually came out. Yeah, so it's, like, so cool they tear off. Is this um, a new monster? Or is brand new monster. monster. Yeah, brand new monster. A brand new, um, 
area. Gameplay, new area, new gameplay type with the 16 players. Yeah. Now, that was in the online Monster Hunters, like the PC ones, mm-hmm. the ones not made by Capcom. But, like, now it's in the main game Have proper. Have you tried it? No, not yet. No? I haven't yet. Um, I played Monster Hunter today. And it introduced, it reintroduced relic weapons. So that was in previous Monster Hunters. And essentially, it's weapons you get as random drops that have randomized stats, elements, um, other stuff. So what what did they say? I don't know. Beat just makes me laugh at every single comment he makes. Beat, all he said was WTF is Monster Hunter. You know, the game you should have put time into yeah, instead of Dissidia. Have. Let's be honest yeah, here. Yeah, let's be honest. Um... So yeah, that's cool. Um, I'm looking forward to if we're getting monthly updates. That's gonna be super cool. I need to cool. get back. I need to get back. I didn't play anything of the spring Me festival, either. and I'm, I'm so gonna... mad because I missed you that. You're gonna bring that back? Oh yeah, I'm sure it's gonna be like by the end, it'll just be like, oh, you know, we're 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 sunsetting. Do you know the term sunsetting? It's like yeah. you know. Yeah. So we're we're sunsetting the online experience for Monster Hunter for now. Here's everything. It's in your game. You want the spring festival? Go pay like twenty thousand zenny to a person, and you can just start it up yourself. Oh, that'd be cool. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Be it'll cool. be like that. Um, now, two last two stories. Okay, regarding uh, mobile games. Oh, Konami. Both bad. Both bad stories. Konami, Castlevania iOS. So they announced a new Castlevania game for mobile devices. Um, it actually looks good, <laughs> but it's on mobile. <laughs> I don't get it. Why not put it on console? It's on this. Why not? Why, you, you have so many great consoles. Why? Why? <laughs> it's probably because it's easier. Oh, God. They're probably going to make more money. Because... Probably going to make... Well, yeah, because it's Japan. Japan only plays games on, on phone, pretty much. Um, okay. <sighs> Last one is uh, another mobile game. This one is uh, is being sunsetted. Speaking of sunsetting, yeah. <laughs> uh, Puzzle Fighter, Capcom's uh, Capcom Vancouver's experimental little mobile title. Uh, it's being sunsetted. They're giving away the final three, like what was going to be planned updates. They're just saying, okay, we're putting them out for free. We're pretty much shutting everything down. You won't be able to buy stuff. You'll be able to play it for a bit longer, and then we're going to shut down the servers. That game wasn't as bad as people made it out to be. Um, it got lumped, lumped in a lot with the Marvel Infinite hate uh, because of the graphical style and stuff. It wasn't bad, but the problem was it wasn't <laughs> good either. It was pretty mediocre. Um, the gameplay, uh, they did add in like a classic mode based on the original gameplay after a while. <laughs> but can you stop reading the chat? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're just laughing. Not right. Um, but no, so like they added in the classic mode, but by that time everyone jumped ship. Mm. So, and because Beat is talking about it, yeah, Falk, there's nothing to say about her. She exists. What what game is this? Street Fighter. The new character. Oh. You know Ed? Yeah. You remember Ed, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's basically girl Ed and she uses a staff. Oh, okay. Uh, so she, she looks cool, but she's not out yet. So we don't know how she's going to... We don't know enough. If she gets revealed, we'll talk about it. Well, no, she's been revealed. There's been a trailer and stuff. Like, we've seen gameplay. Okay. She looks interesting, but I need to play as her to get an impression, you know? Okay. So. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and with that. With that. I think it is break time. Break time. I need a drink. I need to blow my nose really badly. Do I sound <laughs> stuffed up? No, not really. I am. Um, <laughs> and uh, we'll be back to talk about goaty stuff. So, previous years we'll, of goaties. We'll actually get a live goat. Here yeah with us do you like what i said we're going to be talking about uh objects that have the property of relating to a four-legged animal with horns that gives milk we're talking about goaty stuff oh see you in a bit see you in a bit
And we're back. <laughs> That's a goat sound in case you are uh, a soundly illiterate. Um, yes, we're going to be talking about our favorite goatees what do you mean? from Just the favorite uh... goatees. It's not kind of an oxymoron. No favorite games of the year. Favorite game of the year of the years. Yes. What, what did I say wrong? It just didn't sound right. Fine. I think you could have said it in a better We're way. We're talking about, basically, our goatees for the last 10 years. Yes. Uh, starting with 2008. So we're going back uh, about as far as I would say I was realizing video games were important to the world. I think me too. Because, yeah. like, by, before then, they were just kind of a, a pastime. But by about 2008, I'd say that's when I was like, oh, wait, there's something special. So, um... We're gonna go through each yes, of each each will. of our years and talk about our goaties, why they are our goaties, and uh, maybe games that I I know I have a few because I'm like that'll probably be your goatee. So I wrote backup goaties for a few years when I'm like it could be your goatee too. Okay. So we'll make sure we have different ones. Um, Fair enough. But uh, yeah, let's get started on this. I have my list in paper That's form right here in digital form. All right. So well, <laughs> well, could you, I, it's because it literally if I were to put it on my phone by the like the time I'm done, it'll be at like 2%. So fair. I went analog instead. So uh, shall we get started with 2008? So I'm gonna. How about we say it together and see if we have the exact same one? It's not I, going to be. Are at you all. sure? Oh, I'm sure. Are you sure? Oh, I'm sure. I've never been so sure of anything in my life. Okay, because I was like, I'm ninety percent certain this will be like we'll have this one for the same. Okay, we'll say it together. You say it first. Okay, brawl. Nope. What brawl wasn't your goatee? No, dude. What was yours? What other game came out to that? Spore. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my two. Those are the games I put in tons and tons of hours into. Brawl and Spore were like, that was my 2008. One of my favorite games of all time came out in 2008. Was it Burnout Paradise? Yes. What, really? Yes. That seems way earlier than I would have thought. No, it came out in 2008. Okay, well, huh, interesting. Yes. Um, no? Those, I, I, I mean... Well, I'm looking at it. Don't show me. Sorry. I'm, don't look. Well, <laughs> don't look. Um... What's there to say? I mean, what's there to say that hasn't been said about yeah, Brawl? About both like, our games, like, honestly. Yeah, we, 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 we've said so much about, like, how, like I, I mean, Subspace Emissary, you know, the, the multiplayer. It's Brawl, Brawl, like, I put so Brawl's so good. And I, I guess I could talk a little bit about Spore. I haven't talked well, about it much. Go back to Brawl. It's, um, I made a, a few YouTube series. Oh, yeah. They're, it. Oh, you, won't, you won't find them, but they're hilarious. They're um, so bad. My, like, my first, my very first YouTube video was a spore contest video. Really? It's still on my channel here, which you could go back and look at. Um, huh. And it, so I never, um, I never got the hate for the game because I was a bright eyed, bushy, b bright, bright eyed and bushy tailed kid at the time. Like I didn't know. I remember I got the, <clears throat> um, the huge like, collector's edition of spore. Oh, I didn't get that. I just got the game, but, like, uh, you could put it in the case and it like matched up with like the words on like the casing oh no i had yeah. that yeah i had that that's cool oh, was it like a basic thing that was a basic thing yeah oh, okay um no oh. so i i really enjoyed that i put lots of time into that um i know some people think it's a disappointing game but when you're a kid just having fun it was great. i remember playing like hell out of it but i don't remember the details oh i remember the details <laughs> oh i remember downloading sexy spore ladies oh my it God. was the worst they were so bad oh and then, <laughs> then you got like the edgelord ones which had like a million like things coming off them and it oh, killed yeah. my computer oh it was so good um but the game, like, and then I did get the uh, expansion, the Galactic Hero expansion that was written by... There expansions for it? There was one expansion for it, the Galactic Hero expansion. It basically took... Okay, what's the best part of the Spore game? What what phase would you say is the best one? <clears throat> what phases were there? There was the... Cell, creature, tribe, city, space. What was the best one in your eyes? Honestly, I really enjoyed the Cell really i really did because most people agreed creature was the best part because it was the one where you're, you oh, yeah. were acting as the creature right yeah. all like the, the rest of them after that were strategy and then like space stuff right so it basically took the creature part and let you do creature missions in space so it had a full adventure game through the creature stuff but in space then mm -hmm. so it was really cool um 
So, like, I got that expansion. That expansion was great. Like, you could make missions and stuff. And I remember downloading, like, all the Pokemon and, like, making, like, I was trying to recreate Pokemon red, blue, and green and yellow in Spore. Take a guess how that went. Not very well. Absolutely horribly. <laughs> um, but I, I do remember downloading a few uh, creatures, too, off the... Um... Oh, I downloaded tons. I downloaded tons. And at that time, I was super into Kirby, too. So I had, like, every single, like, Kirby form as a as a, a character to play as. It was so great. It was great. I loved it. Um, so between the two, you like Brawl more? Yes. Uh, mostly because, like, my computer was almost not powerful enough to play <laughs> Spore. So there was times where I would literally, it would just start crashing over and over. So that really sullied the experience. And, like, yeah, Brawl, I got so many hours out of it. Oh, like, man. so like... good. It's so good. It's still, I think, my favorite um, Smash game as a package. Oh, like, without DLC? Um, you, is that what you mean? No, in terms of modes, in terms of everything. I like it the best myself. Fair enough, yeah. Yeah. Like, not looking at gameplay, not looking at roster, but just as a package, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I feel like it, it, it introduced a lot that Smash 4 just, like, took from it, you know? So. I think it has the best music in the series. Oh, yeah, no, the remixes yeah. are godlike. <laughs> Brown. Brawl is flawed. Not when you're a kid who no, this is the greatest not. game of all time when you get it. Like, it was so I remember, good. like, um, picking it up at Best Buy. And I'm like, I feel like I'm dreaming. Yeah, it was like, the best. It was thing. it was such a magical Cause, time. Because we were both the people who was, like, looking at the updates every single day. Every single Stay day. Stay up till, like, midnight. And... Yeah, like, oh, it was, it was, it was I, so I wish, good. Like, I wish I could go. It was so days. good. The Brawl <sighs> Dojo time was the best. Okay. I think I think we're, we covered those then. Oh, well, Burnout Paradise is. We talked about it a lot because yeah. <laughs> you just played it. So yeah. Okay. Two thousand nine. So two thousand nine, I could not find a game <laughs> in two thousand nine that I would say I loved. I only found a game in two thousand nine that I simply played and enjoyed. Two thousand nine was not a good year for games for me. There was one. There was one. So what was yours? I want to know. Mine was Uncharted 2. Came out in 2009. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. I didn't know that. Um, it is a one of the best action adventure games ever still. Yep. Um, yeah, what's yours? Um, so again, I, I had to pick a game that I <laughs> played in 2009. Like, it came out, but it, I only simply played it. And that is Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2, <laughs> which is by far probably the second worst Kingdom Hearts game. But, like, that's the only new game. So I didn't play Street Fighter at that time. Like, Street Fighter 4 came out, but I never played it at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, that was before I was into Street Fighter. Um, but, like... There was no games in 2009 that I looked at and said, yeah, that's my game. So, like, I'm like that's, like, the only one less than, like, I, I remember buying that one. And that's it. So, 2009, not a great year. I remember, um... Second worst, Cage. What's the worst? I hate Coded a lot more because Coded has nothing for the plot. So. I remember playing uh, Uncharted 1, like, maybe, like, a week before the second one came out. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, and then... I was like, oh man, I can't wait for the second one. And the second one And then just... it just came out and it was yeah, this is the second one people go to is the best one usually, it's, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Nice. Okay. Okay. 2010? 2010. Better for you? Yes, 2010 gave me one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, uh, which is? Endless Ocean 2. <laughs> I don't know, it sounds like such a nothing <laughs> game, but it's like, man, dive and find all the fish. There's so many cool things in that game, and that game's like Okami when, like, you finish it once and it just... Oh, by the way, you got, like, one campaign of 11 done. <laughs> it's like, there's so much. It's so good. I definitely want to do a full, like, Let's Play that one day. Oh, okay. And it's, like, the only game that, like, I still... Like, I love, but I fear going back to. Mm -hmm. Because there's... N it's windy out. Jeez. It is really windy out. Um, It is so... Night diving in the abyss is the scariest <laughs> thing in a game for me because between not knowing what direction is up, between things just appearing out of darkness, between the fact that there are things that can kill you down there and your oxygen is running out, it's a terrifying experience, but it's so interesting mm -hmm. because all this stuff and it's like real. I mean, it's like there's like 
like 20 or so mythical creatures that aren't real but like it's uh, everything else in there is like like these real creatures that are terrifying everything in the ocean is terrifying but it's cool i love that game um you could play abzu then no that's that's okay and the ocean 2 true vr i would die <laughs> you that's it for you that's it i mean it's it's a diving game what is there me to say about it fair enough so in 2010 i have i still haven't played a truly open world game yet um okay in the sense of like truly open world i was more like the uncharted the the very like so yeah you played linear games you could say burnout paradise is open world but like yeah, but that's a car like, game yeah but i'm talking about like person walking around in a very okay. large space the very first open world game which is also my game of the year of 2010 was red dead redemption I was actually going to say, is it Red Dead? Because yes. it sounds like you were going to Red Dead. And okay. Yeah. Um, sure. It spawned my love of Rockstar as a company. Really? You yes. didn't play any other games before? No. Wow. I, I remember picking up Red Dead like while I was out of town on a vacation. And I'm like, I'm going to play this when I get home. Huh. And it is still one of the best. So you never had any friends who had Grand Theft Auto and you'd go over to their house and play it? Or... No. That's weird, because like ever since GTA 3, that was like the game that all my friends had, and I'd go to their house and play around in it for like 20 minutes, and like that was the most fun, because you could do whatever you want. Yeah. So like I knew them for that, but huh, that's surprising. Um, Yeah, I played like the first half of the game, um, up until right before Mexico. Oh, yeah. Um, Then I quit for some reason, I don't remember. Then well, it's back. probably that AAA burnout, you know, where it's like, probably. because the games are so big, it's like you'll just, you'll get to a point where you're like, I just... I need a break, and then the break never ends. So. But I started playing like at the like the best part I could because like the beginning of Mexico is like an entirely new like expanse, and like yeah. you're riding your horse down like into Mexico, and that music's playing, and that's yep. like one of my favorite game of memories ever, still to this day. Nice, nice. Um, you got, like, have you played it at all? You like, put your. I did buy Undead Nightmare the disc at a garage sale. Oh yeah. End of Nightmare is pretty good, too. It's like five bucks, so I got it. Did you play it? No. <laughs> no. Enough. But I got it, so. Yeah. That's about all I have to say about Red Dead. All right. Yeah. That's a game. I that's can't a... wait for the second one. There you go. Way. With the Battle Royale mode, obviously. Oh, shit. Okay. 2011. So this one was another one I think we might have a similar one for. So I have two. My first pick, tell me if it's yours, is... Little Big Planet 2. Yes. Okay. It is. <laughs> so, because I thought it would be, uh, I put, again, so many hours into that. Because I thought it would be, um, my second pick then is Sonic Generations. Okay. Because I still think that despite being like an anniversary title and reusing all the stuff from previous games, it is like the best Sonic game we've got since Adventure 2. It's so good. Um, it's short, but like in a way that I want to replay it like once a year. Oh, okay. It's one of the best platformers in my eyes like it is so good um yeah no so that game for me was like it was a big deal because i was right when i was like i was with the sonic show and doing stuff for mm -hmm. them it's like when that came out that was a big deal and like i remember playing it and being like this is just what gaming should be and i loved it and uh boy that franchise went downhill again quickly um <laughs> but it got back up and then it went down again and it got up and then it went down <laughs> It's like a roller coaster. Like Mania was tip top again, and then Forces with bottom. <laughs> <laughs> now we're just oh, that franchise is suffering. We're in so Mariana's trench right now. Yeah, it's pretty well. No, because we're getting Mania Plus, so that's oh, going right, back yeah. up. So, um, yep. Back to Little Big Planet Two. It was yes. one of those games that um, that lost sleepover the night before. Yep. No, for yeah, sure. I played the original. Um, yeah, I couldn't find the original actually. I played the original so much they sent me a beta code for Little Big Planet 2. <laughs> wow. That was like a big deal for me. <laughs> so yeah. No. Oh, the second one just improved so much. Oh, for sure. Like yeah. it's almost to a point where, like, aside from the single player campaign, there is no reason to go back to Little Big Planet 1. Yeah. And you can even play the levels that were online from one in two. So it's like mm -hmm. there is no point. Yeah. And it's not like three where they actually removed some content from two. So it's like there's no point I, like, to it. play one. I made this one level called Beach Adventure. And yes. It was like, you've, we've played it. We actually, played it. Yes. We, yeah. we we played through both Little Big Planet 2 and our custom levels on uh, the Hellfire Cons, Coms Sony Thon. So you can go look those up if you'd it's like. It's actually a level that I 
um, improved upon over the time. Yes. I'm like, oh, this is going to be coming out, and I'm going to add this part of the level. And oh, yeah, yeah. I really I really love that game, dude. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> hey, me too. I, it was, it was, I mean, that was, like I said, like all my friends and I, we uh, when it came out, we all got together and played it. I got the collector's edition uh, for Christmas. My Christmas was, a, was me asking for a pre-order on it. Like, that's how it was. Like, that was my Christmas mm-hmm. the year before. I was oh, wanting yeah. to pre-order. Yeah. Um, so I got that, and... Um, yeah, like, I made a bunch of levels that were, like... See, I was not a new... I, I In any game that involves r- making content, I'm never a make new stuff. I'm a recreator. Mm. I, wa- I like to recreate stuff. Yeah. So I recreated Sonic Adventure levels in Little Big Planet and stuff like that. So, like, I was I was making all oh, those yeah, and, yeah. like, oh, Fair man, enough. I love to recreate stuff. So um, that was... Yeah, that, that game is just... It's magical to me i still i still look back on it and think it's great yeah i don't think three approached the the glory and, <coughs> oh geez i'm dying i'm good uh and it doesn't help that they removed a bunch of the costumes from two because the licensing yeah. ran out so it's like that sucks but three isn't a bad game it's not it as at first yeah because it was broken uh but, but it's definitely didn't reach the same levels as no. two so i don't i think dreams is i guess i guess they're uh I just want to, I just want them to approach the fourth one as like a PS4 title instead of a PS3 and PS4 yep, title. Yep, no, fair enough. Okay. 2012. 2012. Kid Icarus Uprising. Yes. Oh, we're in the same for that one. I didn't at come first, up with another um, one. At first, it was PlayStation All-Stars because that's the only game Oof. I remember from that year. 2012 was a pretty bar- barren year for me. Okay, so if you're going to go Kid Icarus Uprising, I will go Skullgirls because Beat just reminded me because I didn't write a second one. I'll go Skullgirls then. Sounds good. Okay. But, um, yeah, Kid Icarus Uprising is still one of my favorite games of all time. It's uh, Sakurai Unleashed, essentially, yeah. and he is such a brilliant game developer and game auteur, I'd say. Um, What's your opinion on the controls? I think people who complain about it are big babies, and they need to grow up and learn that not every game needs to have highly customizable <laughs> controls. No, if it's not how I like to play the game, then it's not. Just get good. People are like, oh, it hurts my hands. Get good. Use the stand. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of these games. Um, oh, and also if you're left-handed, you're born wrong. So sorry, you're just not meant to play the game. I'm kidding. I'm joking. I just find I oh, no, God. I just find it funny. Like 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 there is like a historical thing where like left-handed people were like called like the devil in like the olden days. So I like to bring that back occasionally and just remind left-handed people that they're literally not, what, what not, about not the stand right. I came with. I used the stand a lot. Cause so I played, so when like the, um, when the, when the stand, when I first got the game, I was actually, it was, so it was like, it was right around Christmas. It came out. I remember. Um, and it was just coming out right before a holiday break from school. Mm-hmm. So Fuad, uh, he went out and actually got both our copies. Okay. And so I gave him the money. He went out and bought it and he got it for us. And I brought my, I brought my, Brought it to class and started playing it in class there. Because it was like last day before school was out. Yeah. High school. We had a sub. Sub didn't care. So we're just sitting there. We're playing. And like we're um, we're using the stands, right? And it's great. But then eventually, um, eventually I just stopped using the stand and just played it on its own. Because I realized, no, it's like it's fine to play on its own. You just hold it like this and play it. Yeah. I'd actually, usually I'd be lying down and kind of sitting and playing it like that. Mm. But like, I had no issues. I get... And, I had a friend though who said, "Oh, the fact that they include the stand means that they know that like the the control yeah. scheme's bad." And I'm like, "No, that's just for comfort. It's for comfort. Yeah. You're stupid." And I, I, I like went back and forth. I still the use the stand for like displaying game stuff because it's like it's a nice <laughs> little stand. I don't know where it is, but um, oh man, yeah, the music also. All the like, music all the, is so good with all like, the with all the games like that we've had over the game of the years. It's just like they, they've been they're all so nostalgic. Oh yeah, me. like. I'm thinking of, like, some of them in my head. I'm like, man, I want to play that game again. No, Kid Icarus, I think, definitely deserves some re-release in menu, some form. The main menu. Music oh, it's so good. Like, cool. But, like, even, like, the fact that the multiplayer was, like, just 3D Smash Bros, yeah. basically. And, like, it's just in there. Um, the oh, fact that... version would be so cool. Oh, it would be so good. Oh the fact God. that, like, everything about... <laughs> Just, you know, all the characters and stuff. Like, people are like, oh, man, they put so much, you know, Kid Icarus content in Smash 4. And it's like, yeah, because that game is awesome. That game it, is so amazing. good. Like, it deserves it. It yeah. deserves to be brought back, you know. Lightning Battle, too, that, that song. Lightning Battle is so good. Um, <laughs> it's it's one of the best games um, that Nintendo has put out, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we need, uh, a, we need a new Kid Icarus game. 
Yeah, I'd even take a re-release straight Me up. Too, I would honestly. super take a re-release. I really um, want to play the game again, but I don't want to. Okay, so then, so then, in, in that case, then if if yours is Kid Icarus, I'll go with Skull Girls for mine. Okay. Uh, this game. Right there. Right. Yeah. Right there. Boom. That. Well, that's that's from the backer poster. So this is from oh. later. This is because the oh, game okay. the game first came out, and when it first came out, it wasn't. Um, it only it had no DLC sort of plan, right? Yeah. Because there was a lawsuit that happened with the company where the company that pr- uh, produced it also produced Def Jam Vendetta or something like one like a rapper game and they used the rapper's likeness without their appearance so they got super sued and then there was no money for them to make the DLC characters they had planned out. That sucks. So what do they do? They form a Kickstarter to say give us the money to make our own company and we can release the DLC for it. Okay. So that happened later. But when it first came out I remember just playing Skullgirls and this was right when I discovered fighting games are something magical like fighting games are not just not just like a a game type but it's something that you, like a skill that you learn yeah, yeah, yeah. and get, transfer around and um no matter what fighting game you play there's these ideas that are are can, can be transferred like it's it's just i discovered that fighting games are something really cool um and so around that time that was when i decided to I uh, took videos of me playing the story modes off the PS3 version and I put them up on YouTube and those still get tons of views. <laughs> and so that's a, another like big one for my YouTube career because I got so many people watching me because of my Skullgirl stuff. And I would follow along with the um, the development. I would follow along with the um, the updates. Um, I would post update videos and update, uh, talk about, talk on the forums a lot. Uh, yeah. I mean, Beat was on the Skullgirls forums even. Like, we, we talked there before he was on the podcast. Not the podcast, the Discord. He'll be on the podcast one day, I bet. One day. But, uh, <laughs> like, on the Discord, like, we talked there before that was even a, huh. like, that was a thing, right? Like, there's, there's so many, it led to so many open doors. And, yeah, there's, like, some things that didn't pan out. Like, I was working on a fan game with someone else, um, a couple other people. Yeah. That did not work out at all in the end. There was a lot of crazy stuff. But it led to, like, for instance, I got to meet the voice actor of Beowulf, one of the characters. Mm. And he actually wrote a song for us. And, like, he, but he, because the game didn't release, we it didn't get out there. But, yeah. like, it was, like, there, there were so many cool opportunities that came from that game. Yeah. And I still love Lab Zero to the bottom of my heart. Um, I think they're one of they're one of my favorite they're my favorite indie company for sure, but um, they're definitely like up there for even just companies. Period. Um, I'm super so excited a, for Indivisible. A really, really important game to you. Yeah, because it it got me into kind of like the internet space. You know, yeah, it got yeah, me into the yeah. internet space. So I uh, it, it, to me, it's like it's special for that. I mean, and I mean, the game itself is also probably like one of my favorite just fighting games for how it feels because it's it's just a free flowing Marvel Infinite. Versus, you know, Capcom three sort of like okay, like it's a free flowing fighting game which I really love. Mm-hmm. Um, do I still have the song? It is definitely somewhere on this computer. I did. I for, there was a while where I was looking for it and I couldn't find it, and I did find it, and I did. I do have it, and I asked if I could post it because I I didn't want to get in trouble with him because he did, he wrote and sung the song, and he said I'd rather you not. It's uh, he says like it's one now he's the voice actor for Beowulf, so that's like legally I can't distribute it yeah uh two uh he's kind of a little bit embarrassed about it because he, he was for this fan game that didn't come out and three a little bit is me having like i have a song that's mine sung by the <laughs> voice actor for skull Girl, so it's like a little it's a little special to me but uh oh, okay. it's it is a good song though it's like I, I i hum it quite often but um yeah it's not special to me cool that's it for 2012 that's it for 2012 uh, so 2013 is my personal favorite year of games ever. I wow. Think it's one of the, the best, my fa- like the best year of games, in my opinion. Wow. Okay. In terms of me, because there, there are a lot of choices I had at that end of the year. Oh, I, I only, I, I had one choice for this one. Like, there was no questions for mine. And it's going to be a boring answer. All right. So, you go first. Okay. So, two of them that weren't my game of the year. Um, one of them was, uh, GTA 5, because it was just, <laughs> sorry, this is before I started getting into the nitty gritty, but the way that Western game, <laughs> games. the way that game just, no, like, uh, it just functions and it works, and it's just, it was just so impressive, and like, I can't believe, I couldn't believe how like well this open world worked, and like functioned. That was 2013, wow, okay. September. That's yeah. crazy, that game is still going. I remember going to the midnight release for that. Huh, okay. Yeah. Um, second up, not second, but like just another one was Bioshock Infinite. Yep, it was 
one of the best first person shooter games I've ever played and have played. Okay. Um, the story is incredible. Mm-hmm. You, have you played it all? I watched a full playthrough of it. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's it's my favorite Bioshock game. I know that's controversial. I know some people hate that game. They yeah. think it's they think it's. Yeah. But I still really like Bioshock One. No, fair enough. But the game I landed on, number one. Yep. But so many hours into this game. Okay, you're hyping it up. <laughs> Animal Crossing New Leaf. That's my number one. Really? Yes. That's not even my favorite Animal Crossing game. Man, I love that game. I mean, it's a good game. Like, 100%. Like, it's... it's it's I mean, Animal Crossing is... But, no, I mean... I... I, I, I rate games... No, go ahead. I rate games by the amount of time I put into them, plus how much fun I play with them. Yeah, you know, how no, good for they sure. Are, for sure. That type of thing. And, like, I just loved Animal Crossing New Leaf every single second I played it. Wow. Yeah. No, I get that. Nice. No, I think that's deserved. I, I think put, that's deserved. I put 500 hours into my town, and then I decided to delete it. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. And I put another 500 hours in. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's like City Folk was... I played a lot of City Folk. Um, but my for me, my favorite is still the first Animal Crossing, because there's like an... Uh, I've talked about this a lot, but there's like a mystery to the first Animal Crossing that isn't in any of the other ones. I love the idea of not having everything explained to you and things just happening and animals kind of not loving you until you were really nice to them. Like they, they, they will verbally berate you if you're mean to them. Like it's, (laughs) I I like that about the first one. I played, I I played wild world a lot. That was my first time. Yeah. Wild world. I I put a lot into too. Um, (coughs) but yeah, I just, New Leaf is just on another level. Okay. Mine's really boring. It's One Piece Pirate Warriors 2. Huh. So I played the first One Piece Pirate Warriors. It was a really good game. But it was definitely flawed and only had about eight characters. Which for a Warriors game... (laughs) Well, no, because it's not eight. Because there's the... There's all the Straw Hats. Then there's Boa. Whitebeard. Ace. And, uh, Jinbei. So yeah, there's like... 12 characters right for a warriors game that's not a lot and the story mode is bad like unlike warriors 3 which is like has like a, it warriors 1 and 3 recap the the original story and it does really good jobs i feel in both ones in the first one it's more of like an action game where you have linear levels that you run through which yeah. for a warriors game is really interesting yeah. linear levels in a warriors game right and like you have that like be done well and you have like um you're given all these abilities with like um you can like go into like an over the shoulder grappling hook sort of thing mm-hmm. and then but instead you send Luffy's arm places and you can like grapple yeah. so it's like there's some really interesting stuff there um so that made a very unique you know single player thing for Pirate Warriors 1 um and then Pirate Warriors 3 instead it it just uses the normal sort of warriors gameplay but it covers everything like nothing is left out um this one has an original story that's bad like it's <laughs> it's not good but just the gameplay and just all the characters and the amount of time I put into it, it's like, oh my gosh, so good. <laughs> and so, uh, w- spoilers, we'll be talking about Pyro Warriors 3 later, so I think we'll just save it for then. Okay. <laughs> okay. 2014. 2014. So 2014 to 2015 were kind of like the years I kind of like didn't enjoy games as much as I did. Fair enough. after 2013, I'm like, how are they going to beat this? I fair enough, fair enough. Didn't. But there were... A few games I liked in those years. So you go for first for 2014. Ha 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 Shovel Knight. Oh, that came out 2014. Yes. Forgot about that. It's uh still one of my favorite games of all time. I played it the day it came out. Boy, jeez, <laughs> that's a good game. It's a really good game. It is. Um, and I'm still playing it to today. Yeah, I'll pop it in and run it through. It's uh, Smash Four didn't come out in 2014, yes, did it? it? Did. Really? November 21st. Huh. Remember the day. <laughs> I don't. No, I'd still say Shovel Knight is still my my goatee for that year because it's like it it goes. Well, the thing with Smash Four is like we <clears throat> knew it was going to be good. Yeah. We knew, like, yeah, we it was. It wasn't the surprise like Brawl was. Brawl yeah. was a huge momentous thing, mm-hmm. and yeah, Smash Four was a lot more. Yeah, it's more of the same. I mean, it's yeah. still great, but it is still more of the same. Yeah. And like, you know, there was... Oh, you know why? Because I'm thinking of the Wii U version. Because I forgot the 3DS version came out first. Yeah, it came out on October 13th, I think. Yep, so there you go. Um, but no, yeah, Smash 4 is... Yeah, that, that's another great game. But for me, it's uh, 
Shovel Knight for sure. Oh, yeah, for I sure. think it's one of the best indie titles of all time. Um, I know people are like, man, why does Shovel Knight appear in everything? And I'm like, because he's awesome. Because he's a pioneer. He's he he didn't because before that I'd say I'd say before Shovel Knight indie games weren't good. Like there was a few that were good, but for the most part they were mostly mm. eh. And it was when Shovel Knight came around, he really refined the formula to be. Like the combination of taking the old of like old gameplay styles and updating it to be new and good. Yeah. You know, saying like just because a game is supposed to be looking like it's on the Nintendo doesn't mean we need it to play like it's on the Nintendo, yeah, right? For so sure. you know, make it widescreen, yeah. add in more colors, add in colors not possible on the original Nintendo. Um, you know, make it run at sixty, make, you know, all that good stuff. So I know I think Shovel Knight definitely deserves to be the mascot for indie games and uh, that's why seeing him in indivisible bloodstained uh the pogo smash bros game that was in it like all these games maybe smash 5 maybe even smash 5 that i would be wouldn't so i good. wouldn't even be surprised be surprised he's yeah. the only indie guy with an amiibo yeah honestly. so like yeah it just makes sense it makes sense for for an indie rep more than captain video for sure oh yeah, yeah. For sure. um so definitely i think he deserves to be like recognized so for sure yeah. Okay. Yours. Um. 2014. I was like, I was like, Bloodborne. No. Um. Smash Four. It's good, but like, it's not something I. Yeah. Put it's, again, a we talked. It was wasn't into. the surprise that we we want. Like, we got like with Brawl. The surprise, and I still love this game to this day. Cannot wait for its re-release. Which? For the third time. I roll warriors. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get that. I get that. I remember that. when it got announced, you uh, got me to play Pirate Warriors. Too. Yeah, because because I remember I've never asking played you. A Warriors game I remember before. asking you like, do you know what Warriors games are like? And you're like, no, I don't. I don't know. And I'm like, here, come here. Let me <laughs> let, let let me guide your hips as we play <laughs> as we play one of my favorite game genres of all times. And um, yeah, man, it was just. No, you're I, right. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to, to get that for a third time. I, was, like, yeah. it's, it's, I know it's not like an important game element, but the fan service in that game. Is oh, the no. Best. That's a game element. That's an important game element. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, no, for sure. Because, like, like, yeah. Just seeing, like, the references and the moves and, like, the areas. Like, I remember, like, every piece of news that came up for that game, I was like, I cannot wait for this game. Yeah, every... Every single aspect of that game, I mean, aside from, I mean, I do have some issues with the bosses. Like, I don't like the bosses. Yeah, I think the, I think the bosses the were not good. But that was uh, made better in Legends, mm -hmm. and they already confirmed they're making it better now. Yeah. Like, so, like, they, they get what was bad, and they're working on it, and I still, I'm sure we'll get Hyrule Warriors too. It's going to happen, because they have all that ready. And, like, they're always working on millions of Warriors games. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. like, it will happen. I hope and, so. I and, really I, and, I, and I'm excited to see where they go with it next. Because yeah. it, it sells amazing. <laughs> like, uh, Fire Emblem Warriors, not as much. You know, uh, One Piece games, they sell pretty good. But, like, Hyrule Warriors, so like tons. that's that's their best-selling Warriors game by far. Yeah. And especially putting it on the Switch, which everyone already has. Putting, just slapping on, um, you know, Breath of the Wild Link. <laughs> that's going to get, that's going to sell. Yeah. So, Yeah. Yeah, I really can't wait for no. That one makes a potential sense. Potential second one. Yeah, but yeah. The original is just. I do hope we get to see some representation of Hyrule Warriors in Smash Switch. That'd be nice. Whether it's going to be a costume or I'd even take music. Me too. Like honestly. it'd be so good. Yeah. Man, those Warriors guitars. Oh. What? Oh, it's so good. I love the Warriors guitars. Um. All right. Yeah, that's about it for 2014. 2015. Speaking of Warriors, Pirate Warriors three for me. That was an. So, like, again, Power Warriors 2, I had issues with. Story mode wasn't as good. Um, overall, like, the, the single players, there's less. Um, there was some stuff that was, like, outright unobtainable. Like, you couldn't get if you didn't um, if you didn't pre-order, if you didn't, like, do certain stuff. Like, there was stuff you couldn't get. Power Warriors 3 comes out. Everything's in it. Everything you want. Yeah. Like, uh, they, they fix the problems of having uh, multiple... Like, for instance, in Power Warriors 2, you play as, like, the post-time skip versions of the characters. And, like, they are, they're better than the pre-time skip. Mm -hmm. So by doing crazy amounts of stuff, you can unlock the old pre-time skip versions. But by that time, number one, they're weaker. Why would you use them? 
Number two, like you have to re-level them up. They're separate characters. Mm -hmm. Power Warriors 3 goes in and fixes everything. It is just, it is still my favorite Warriors game, 100%, because the combat's fast. Every character, you know, in, so you know in Hyrule Warriors, you basically have like your heavy button is a, it's it's a combo ender, right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And you, if you just, like no one can combo with X. Pirate Warriors has every character has multiple combo strings. Some that are X Y X X X X X X Y, like going heavy heavy light. Mm -hmm. So like every character has multiple combo strings, and it's um it's so fast. Uh, everything dodge cancels crazily. Um, it's it's the best, and it's it's getting a re release on the Switch, and like I say, <laughs> get that. Like I'm not gonna get it because I already put so many hours in the PS4 version. Um, but like. That's a great game. That one is my favorite Warriors game. And, like, that was no questions asked my favorite game of that year. Nice. Nice. For me? Yep. You're not going to like this. Oh, no. Is it? Okay, question. Western? No. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Maybe? No. Well, I'll be able to tell when you say it. <laughs> Keep guessing. Uh, is it on Nintendo? No. It's on PlayStation. Yes. Okay. Is it um is it mostly single player or mostly multiplayer? Mostly single player. Okay. Is it um I don't know, that's it. That's as far as I can go. <laughs> yes, it is Halo Kitty Island Adventure. <laughs> don't laugh, I played that game. Um no, I played Roller Rescue on the GameCube. Never mind. Go ahead. It is Metal Gear Solid 5, the Phantom Pain. Okay, that is yeah. That's 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 Japanese technically. It's you're your right. fault. I know you it's I know it's my series. fault. Oh, I remember. I was okay, like... I, I, again, gameplay perfection. Story stabs myself and I think shoves me into the ocean. I think it's more with like I played all of them in rapid succession in 2015. Yeah, that just the idea of expanding. No, what's already been told. No, you're right. In five, you're right. Enough for enough for me. Yeah, see, I was different. I've been like waiting for a big conclusion, and so yeah. then that's what I wanted. I wanted that story conclusion. But I remember so. the I was I finished uh, the Ground Zeroes the night before Phantom came. Oh out. man, I and played that... so I put in so much into Ground Zeroes. I loved it. Yeah, but it's because I wanted. I was like, I'm practicing for the oh, story. Yeah. So I was like, oh man, go ahead. Um. But yeah, the, the trailer that showed up for like Phantom Pain, like it was the night before the game came out. I'm like, oh my god! It was one of those um, nights like I lost sleep. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But the game itself, it's like the gameplay is like some of the best gameplay in a game, I think, stealth wise. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, got my one of my friends into Metal Gear, Damien. Really, he wasn't before. No. Oh wow, huh? Yeah. Um, there's not much to say. It's really good game there's not many other games i that can think of in 2015 but... might have been my biggest disappointment in 2015 Fair myself enough. but that's just again because i wanted the story so oh well all right 2016 2016 again we might have a similar one for this no he won't you, oh you sure yeah i'm sure okay 2016 goatee final fantasy 15 that's my number two. Oh, that's your number two. Okay, yes. sounds good. Well, my number two was Monster Hunter Generations. Then, and oh, I mean, okay. there's not much to say about that. Uh, we haven't said about Monster Hunter, but yeah, the Final Fantasy 15. Oh, it's so oh, good. Man. I know some people dislike it, and like I don't get why. Like some people are like, "This is the biggest disappointment of a game," and I'm like, "What are you talking about? It's so good." It was, my, it was like, I remember I wasn't that interested in it. No, and, and then, then I then, told you, and then you, get into it. And then you showed me Kingsclave, and I'm like. I really want to see what happens next. Yeah, no, so and it's uh, like one of my favorite yeah, between, games. Yeah, between like like and that was similar to Brawl, the lead up to 15 was really good. Um there was a lot of um uh, shows and a lot of like we had the anime, you had Kingsclave, you had um all the different um uh, like events where they would reveal little bits about it. And that's why when people say like mind you, this is the game that has been in production I mean, it's not in production, but, like, this is a game that we were shown in, like, E3, like, 2007 or something. That's yeah. versus 13, right? So, like, it's way back, but, like, it's obvious that they didn't do production that whole time. There was stuff that they scrapped totally and then, you know, redid it. But, like, that's when people are like, oh, man, they're not showing stuff for Final Fantasy VII Remake? Guess that game's dead and not a, <laughs> not a real game. I'm like, what are you talking about? This is the exact same thing that happened with Final Fantasy XV. Like, it's no different. Yeah. I mean, if anything, the fact that they showed the gameplay that quickly since the reveal 
means it's way further along than 15 was when they reannounced it. Like, I am, I, I think there's no problem. Like, don't worry about the 7 remake. People are crazy about that. But, like, man, it was so good. And then the road trip with the boys. Um, I, but I don't get that idea of it wasn't Final Fantasy enough. Because I Final really Fantasy has never been... I don't have a horse in this race. <laughs> it's literally about four warriors trying to go save a crystal. Like, what's not Final Fantasy enough about that? That's literally the plot of Final Fantasy 1. There's when... a princess involved. Like, it's it's a Final Fantasy plot. Like, I mean, I'd make arguments that, like, 8 isn't Final Fantasy enough because it similarly takes place in a modern age. Or, you know, 13 isn't because the gameplay for that is press the X button over and over to... <laughs> do stuff the com i really liked that it was um not turn-based because like with rpgs <clears throat> before then i wasn't a big fan yeah of you you did like turn-based until we get to a later game yeah. um it was fantasy yeah like it was they literally said we wanted to do a modern fantasy and i think the way they integrated the um modernness with the fantasy was one of the coolest yeah, things ever really well done i think yeah, right there. Final Fantasy can do whatever it wants as long as it's Warriors Life protecting whatever the makeup. It's literally Final Fantasy. Yeah. And like, oh man, that game's great. Oh, and it's still getting content and it's like, oh, I'm it's still great. planning to replay it when all, everything's said and done. It's uh, it's cool. Now go and be able to switch in combat and stuff. Oh, that's gonna like, be so it's, I, I played like the, the little bit I played. It's like, the sad thing is, so if you switch characters, you can't actually like, as soon as the battle's done, you switch back to Noctis. Yeah. But, like in battle, like you can, like literally it got to a point where I was just like, I just want to play as someone else. And you switch characters and the game changes. Yeah. Like, plays Gladio and it's like, you know, with parries. You switch over to uh, Ignis and it's Devil May Cry. Mm -hmm. Switch over to Prompto, boom, you're playing a first person shooter. Like, it is Third. so, well, whatever. <laughs> so it's great. Man, I love it. That game's great. And then you get all the DLC, like the side stories now. Side stories are great. Yeah, yeah. but I like that the side stories were in addition to, like, the main story. Yeah, they like, weren't like, necessary. Like, well, no, but, like, like one thing I was worried about when, when Episode Gladio came out was, like, like that was good, but how, none of that, like, really transferred over to the main story. But now, oh. everything is literally, like, you are transferring it over to the main everything, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I really like that. Um, okay, what's yours? I know I hate this game sometimes. Oh, I, I know. I know exactly what it's going to be. It sometimes. But in the end, I still doing the letter O. I still love big it. letter O with my hands. Day. Like it's Overwatch. It's Overwatch. Um, if we did this about two weeks ago, that wouldn't be on the list. <laughs> Funny thing, um, before Overwatch came out, I was contemplating which game should I get? Should I get No Man's Sky or Overwatch? And I was on the side of No Man's Sky for a long time until it got delayed. Okay, that delay. <laughs> saved my life <laughs> yep so when i eventually picked up overwatch i was like i've always wanted to get into blizzard games but they've all been on pc yes so when this game was going to be on a console i'm like oh my god i finally can play one of the blizzard games and i just like i just loved it from the beginning like the like the the world the lore like the potential for lore in the yeah. future like the gameplay it's amazing used in the right like way <laughs> it's amazing but maybe some of the players aren't is what you're saying that's what i'm saying there you yes. go um there's like the constant updates is what i love too like i can always come back to the game there'd be something new there yep so what, that's why i want to get blizzard games because like the um what do you what, what do you call it uh the support for the game okay yeah so long but yeah Okay, we've talked a lot about Overwatch, so yeah. yes, we will, we, we're good for that. 2017. 2017. Hoo boy. Again, my title for this one is one that I, I've never seen anyone else say is their goatee, but it's just because it was a game that came out and surprised me so hard. Um, this I, I sometimes think this might just have to be a year of a tie for me. Okay. Because I cannot put the two... Okay, well, you do yours, because yours. mine mine does not. <laughs> I, we won't have anything to say about mine. You won't. Um, number one, if I, if I had a gun to my head and had to choose one, 
between the two, it would have to be Persona 5. I'm waiting for Beat to scream in the chat. <laughs> he hates that game for some reason. I don't get it. It's a great game. It's, it's an amazing game. It's, it's an important game for me. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, it's, um, after Final Fantasy 15, I was in, like, I, I had a newfound respect for RPGs. Yes, and this was your first real turn-based one. Yes, and I was, like, kind of skeptical. Oh, he said barf. There we go. There. <laughs> um, but you told me it was a mainly jazz-focused soundtrack? Yes. That's what interested me at first. But then, um, when I actually played it, I, again, we, I talked about this on the podcast before, but I played it over the course of 2017, which was a very, very life-changing year for me. Yes, yes. Um, and just playing that game throughout the years, just... It melded, like it taught me things in life. That, uh, it was really Ev- everyone's to me. first persona is like a magical experience. Yeah. So for like you, that was definitely a uh, a magical one. You still need to get around to playing three or four. I do, I do. Yeah, those games are like once you get in, you'll just be like four. Four. I like four better, but some people like three better. Yeah. But it it just it's always what everyone's first one is the magical one. Yeah. Really, the ending is like <clears throat> that song with the stars and us is just like man like it's a great title and what was the other one i mean i guess breath of the wild yes yeah fair enough we we talked a lot about that in the zelda zelda podcast there well just a side thing is like at first i wasn't a big fan of it because my expectations were something else yeah but on my second playthrough i fell in love with it like completely fair enough fair enough what do you have to say mine's spark the electric jester (laughs) like again like this is a game that no one has talked about this is yeah okay I yes that's why like Persona three, well no you can't control your party in Persona three FES it's only in Persona three Portable you control your party but no Spark the Electric Jester is like to Shovel Knight like what what, what Shovel Knight is to like um you know like Mega Man and stuff huh. it is to Sega games okay so it is like the actual well, like Sega and Kirby for some reason. Um, so like this, it's just like, what if Sonic got powers like Kirby and the game escalated like Bayonetta? (laughs) Like I'm talking, when I'm talking, it escalates like Bayonetta. I mean, like the ending nearly made me cry from the hype. It's so good. Will it ever get a release on anything? Sonic will see the game. (laughs) Well, it was, it, I mean, it's literally running on a Sonic fan game engine, Yeah. but like, and like the character looks just like, like, you know, the, the, the spark Kirby hat. Yeah. It's that on a character. <laughs> okay. Like it's it's so blatant. But like it's so good. And like you play it and then there's a second campaign which <laughs> completely changes how the game works and like oh my god. And then there's like and you're playing I'm going to spoil something right away because you're never going to play it because it's on PC only. But like you're playing and you get like so you beat up a boss and all of a sudden it goes into like the character you're playing as in the second playthrough, his mind and you're doing a battle in the mind randomly. And then all of a sudden, you're hearing this like crazy rock theme, and you're like, "This is pretty cool." Boss gets to half health. Lyrics kick in, oh, and man. it's like Metal Gear Rising, oh, and you're man. like, ah! <laughs> and like, "Oh, it's so good!" Oh man, it's it's it just because of cause, like I put like twenty bucks into that on Kickstarter, and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm excited for it," and like to have that game blow past my expectations so hard. Yeah. It was my goatee, because I'm like, that game was so hype. And uh, I'm looking forward to the sequel that's been announced, because it is a na- it is now... So that's like a 2D sprite-based platformer. Yeah. This one is now a 3D Devil May Cry-style like oh action game. So like, oh! Um, that's going to be good. That game is so good. Okay. So, last thing with 2017, it's like, I think my second favorite year of games that was good it was it was a really good year oh man like i mean for that one like the other games that were up there were like near automata but like i couldn't talk about that without with you here Fair so enough, like yeah. i but like so many games in 2017 like i remember the first half of 2017 was just like this is unprecedented almost yeah 2017 like a... was great now 2018 what is your current game of the year i've only played pretty much <laughs> One game from 2018. I'm looking at my... I was looking through my library. And I'm like, there's only one game from 2018 I'm actually playing. And that's Digimon on the PS4. (laughs) So am I going to say this is my goatee? I mean, currently... What about Monster Hunter? 
Because you are done the game, okay. basically. You no, can... you're right. Monster Hunter is definitely another one I up there. I thought Monster Hunter would be. Um, I honestly forgot. Because I think <laughs> I I did burn myself out on Monster Hunter a little bit because I got I went through it so oh, hard right yeah. so there was a little bit of it where I'm like like I played it and I loved it and then it like went away but I'm still playing Digimon you know so um I would say right now my Godi is indeterminate so far mm -hmm. because I need to play more um okay. there's so many games of this year that I still haven't played so like I'm still catching up we're only a third of the way through the yeah. year and Which so I we're you know we're we're trying to get through but there's I feel like my i don't have a one which yet. flows into my next question what game in the future do you see being a potential game of the year contender for you okay so we got a couple okay smash switch oh yeah i mean no <laughs> but i mean it's i think it's going to be like a smash 4 situation it could be yeah for sure um mind you if it, i mean if none of the other games hit better like that yeah, could be my goatee that's enough. a that's a guarantee on there yeah. um there is bloodstained uh, that being the like Castlevania style indie game, mm -hmm. um, by the Castlevania creator, yeah. um, Indivisible, mm -hmm. if it hits this year, it might. Um, there's what else? Do you have any others? I have at least two. Okay, but they're Western games. Go ahead, <laughs> taint my podcast. What? No, good. First one is Red Dead Two, obviously. Okay, yeah. Um. I could see them just like blow it, like GTA five level times hundred. That is another one. Kingdom Hearts three. If you actually have faith, <laughs> I don't cross tag battle. Oh, beats excited for DLC. The game. <laughs> the second one is uh, Spider Man PS four. Oh yeah, that's another one for yeah. sure. Yeah, I could definitely see that one being a. That's one I'm excited for too. Yeah, yeah, that Can't one might be good. that one. Um. I don't know if there any others for me. There is Mega Man 11, but I don't think that one will be goatee. I think that one will be good. It looks good. But I don't know about it being goatee material. I think it's... It'd have to do something crazy. It's going to be good, but it's not going to be like, oh, holy shit, good. Because, it, 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 I mean, you still have the... I'm not going to play Dragon Quest. Gross, get that out of there. Um, <laughs> it's going to be... like Because, like, I mean, you still have the, the intro stage. Eight robots. Final robot stages. Unless they change up that formula, I can't see it being anything amazing right now. But we'll see. And no, I'm five dollars for three characters. No, it's still. Sh I'm not. I'm not bending over for Arxis again. <laughs> so, any other games you have uh, mm. anticipated for? I guess we already did our most anticipated, but like, yeah, um, updated. For April 2018. I don't know. I mean, we um, probably have a better idea once E3 hits. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Get, definitely getting ready for E3. I mean, another game that's that I'm ex I already have pre-ordered is um, Little Witch Academia for PS4. Mm. But that's uh, only because I because the studio that makes it to the anime triggers like one of my favorite studios of all time for anime. Yeah. And um, they they're actually doing the opening for Indivisible, so that's gonna be cool. Oh, okay. But I definitely I've always wanted a game from them, so like getting a game from them will be super cool. I don't know if it'll be goatee, but we'll see. Um Yeah. yeah I think good. that's about it. I think we're good. We hit the about two and a half hour mark almost. You're not good. No QA? Um Oh no. Get out Detroit become human. Gross. Okay, yeah, we'll do a couple. <laughs> hit, hit us up with a couple questions, guys. Anything that you'd want us to to, to ask us about. Um, no joke questions, beat. Yes. How y'all doing? I mean, pretty good. Yeah. I'm getting over my cold that I get pretty much every week now. That sucks, but, uh, not bad. We're going to be sitting down and watching, uh, Spider-Man. And Thor. And Thor. Yes. This time with the director's commentary on, because yes, we, yes, we watched it the that. one yeah. time already, uh, with my mom because she wanted to see it. And so this time we're going to watch it with that. So it'll be fun. How do you type with boxing gloves on? Very carefully. Will you do Labo building? I actually was looking today at the Labo. I went to Best Buy and saw it there. Or yesterday. I went there and saw it. Mm -hmm. And part of me was like, I could get that. But honestly, I, I have other games I'm going to play right now. So I'm going to yeah. wait a bit on Labo until, uh, until it goes down a bit in price. And um, I have more time. As simple as that. I'm still super interested in that, though. Yeah, me too. But it's just like, it's not something I need in my house. Yeah. 
Uh, I thought David Cage was the guy who played the Goblin in the Spider-Man movies. You know what? That's about how David Cage looks. He looks like him. <laughs> it's cardboard. It's not just cardboard. Have you looked at it? Like, have you seen the videos? Like The cardboard is crazy. Like, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. not just regular cardboard. Like, it's all punched out perfectly. It has all the customization parts. It has all the all the stuff. And then the game. Just it's not very, just cardboard. Very weak generalization. Do you know about the... Um, the crazy thing about the cardboard in Japan, though, hmm. all the cardboard in Japan is, um, like, actually recycled. There's no new cardboard in Japan. Yeah. So it's literally, like, they take the old papers from games and stuff and turn it into the cardboard. That's cool. So, like, yeah, it's interesting. Huh. Despite all my rage, I'm still playing a da game by <laughs> David Cage, of course. <laughs> okay, I think we'll take maybe one or two more questions before we, uh, before we sign out here. Yep. If you have anything to say. Or not. That's fine. We should, type... open, we should open an email inbox and just have people send them so that we have them all. Yeah, we should. I mean, that's totally just, again, copying the best friends. But it'd be cool to have. We'll get that. We build. We build. From existing. Yes. Who would win in a fight? Me or Goku? <laughs> this is Beat asking this question, by the way. <laughs> Goku. Um, <laughs> what's your dream E3 announcement? Oh. Definitely a new custom robo. Uh, the other option is just uh, a good new Animal Crossing. That's yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, yeah, there's probably there's something I would love, but probably a new Burnout game, honestly. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, best center in Kagura girl that isn't Homura. Uh, Yo Zakura, you have no answer to that. <laughs> Next question's yours. How about celebrating your weight loss achievements? I haven't really planned any weight loss. Um, go, 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 go to a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a donor yesterday. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Yes. Um, I've been kind of like really like just planning my general future. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. I think we can call that here then. I think so. And uh, so thank you all for listening either on the uh, stream or if you're on the podcast later. You're awesome. Every single one of you except I hope, Beat. I hope the future is friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? What's the joke? Is there a joke? Is there a pun us, there? Tell us. The future is friendly. They don't know about tell us. That's a Canadian thing. Right. The future is. I hope the future is. <gasps> you can't just. I hope the future exists. That's like me talking about house hippos. The North American house hippo sleeps for 6 to 12 hours a day. It eats breadcrumbs on toast. They don't know what that is. Do you know what you, you were oh, the house? I, do, yeah, I, I was do. going to say, I was going to say the way you're looking at me was like, was like, I don't know what he's talking about. And I was going to say, you may not remember your childhood, but you will damn remember the house hippo. I've seen the house hippo. We all have. Um, it's and with great. that, with that, we're done. We'll, we'll see you later. Talk to you next week. Ciao.